the 1982 Tangerine Bowl is brought to you by the makers of Toyota Cars and Trucks, who remind you that it's a good feeling to buckle up for safety. So get the feeling whenever you drive. By the U.S. Army, a place to be all you can be. By Polaroid, inventors of the Light Mixer Sun Cameras. With 600 high-speed film, they can turn bad light into good pictures. And by Mattel Electronics, the maker of Intellivision, an exciting and challenging home video game system. It's a beautiful crystal clear evening here in Central Florida where the tangerines grow best. Tonight, the 37th annual Tangerine Bowl game between Boston College and Auburn University. Hi, I'm Steve Grant. Welcome to our telecast. We're happy to have you with us here tonight as we've got two teams on the upswing. Jack McNell getting Boston College all pumped up and back into a bowl first time in 40 years. And Pat Dye getting the Auburn Tigers all pumped back to the bowls first time in eight years. As you know, on these Mislu Bowl game telecasts, I patrol the sidelines, and joining me tonight on the Auburn sideline will be Mike Hogwood, and I know that the Auburn Tigers are all pumped up. They're pumped up. They haven't been to a bowl game in a while. They're pumped up because they've had a great season. We'll be talking to the players when they make great plays, and if there is an injury, be there to give you a first-hand report. All right. We mentioned about the similarities. Teams on the upswing. This is also a game of contrast, and here to fill you in about that are play-by-play -play and color commentators, Howard David and Dan Abramowitz. Thank you, Steve Grad, very much. Auburn, a team that plays the wishbone. Danny Abramowitz, one of the few teams that plays the wishbone anymore. Their job tonight will be to run the football, as it's been all year with Bo Jackson and Lionel James. And talking about Boston College, number 22, Doug Flutie is the key. Howard, he's definitely the key to this football game and Auburn's ability to keep him within the pocket. Because once he gets out of that pocket, he becomes a very dangerous runner, but he also has great peripheral vision to pick up on the secondary receiver. So he is definitely going to be the key to the game. Scott Nislick, the tight end, and it's uh, true that, yes, the tight end for Boston College is the key receiver. He's caught 39 balls this year, a converted wide receiver. The Boston College defense and the Auburn defense both play very actively in the secondary. We'll be back to match him up with Dwayne Dow in just a moment. Now, the bowl game matchups brought to you by Rise Super Gel. Hi, everybody. Dwayne Dow, Mizzou Television Network Control. A good ball game, the Tangerine Bowl. The Eagles out of Boston College, a strong team from the East, take on the Tigers from Auburn, who beat the mighty Crimson Tide of Alabama, along with a lot of other teams this season. Now, let's take a look at these two fine football teams. As part of the Tangerine Bowl festivities, players from both teams experience today in the newest wonder of Walt Disney World, Epcot Center. Members of the Auburn Tigers defense discover the 21st century in Future World. In front of the 18-story Spaceship Earth, defensive ends Jeff Jackson and Scott Riley, nose guard Dow Ottman, and defensive tackles Ben Thomas and Doug Smith. Relaxing after exploring the six acres of the land are linebackers Chris Martin and Greg Carr. Right outside the solar-powered universe of energy, cornerbacks Tim Drinkard and David King. And safeties Dennis Collier, Mark Dormany, and Bob Harris. And preparing to take the amazing journey into imagination are place kicker Al Del Greco and punter Lewis Colbert. Meanwhile, the Boston Eagles offense assembled for a tour of great nations in World Showcase. South of the border at Mexico, the Boston front line, right tackle Mark McDonald, right guard Glenn Reagan, center Jack Belcher, left guard Steve Lively, and left tackle Gary Kowalski. On the road to mysterious China, split end Paul Zidane, tight end Scott Nizelek, and flankers Brian Brennan and John Shane. Near the entry castle at Japan, fullback Bob Beesnick, tailback Troy Stratford, and quarterback Doug Flutie. And strolling the romantic plaza in Italy is place kicker Kevin Snow. Just beyond Spaceship Earth are this year's Tangerine Bowl head coaches, Pat Dye of the Auburn Tigers and Jack Bicknell of the Boston Eagles. The teams are on the field for the Tangerine Bowl. We'll get right to the kickoff after these messages.
Bislu is pleased to have Toyota with us again this year as a major sponsor of the Tangerine Ball. And on behalf of Toyota is Mr. Warren Crystal, Vice President of Marketing. Thank you very much. Toyota's reputation as a leading manufacturer of cars and trucks is built on a foundation of quality. And it's a pleasure to be associated with two quality teams like those playing here today. Toyota Motor Sales is pleased to present $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of both Auburn and Boston College. And on behalf of Toyota, I'd like to wish all of you a happy holiday season. Electricity reigns supreme of the Tangerine Bowl number 37. I personally, Howard David, along with Danny Abramowitz, particularly delighted to be here. For me, Danny Abramowitz, if you look at Al Del Greco, the kicker for Auburn. This is my seventh Tangerine Bowl. Pure excitement in the stands. I'll tell you what, this is really excitement tonight. I think we've got two fine football teams, like we said, contrasting styles. But I'll tell you what, it's going to be a wide-open football game. A lot of hard-hitting is the advertising before the game. The deep men on the left is Howie Brown. On the right, Kenny Bell, as they await the kick for Auburn of Al Del Greco. A sidewinder. You can just feel the excitement. 50,000 plus at the Tangerine Ball. As Del Greco approaches the ball, we are ready. It is Howie Brown at the two-yard line. And taken down at the 21-yard line by Pat Thomas. Boston College, as we look at Howie Brown, will set the offense for you. And, of course, everybody knows about number 22, Doug Flutie, the quarterback. We'll set the offense for you as they come. Here's the Boston College offense. Kowalski, Lively, Belcher, Reagan, and McDonald. The starting line. Nislik, Zidanek, and Shane, the receivers. Nislik is the key. Flutie, Stratford, and Beestick in the backfield. Flutie wants to go up top. And it is almost intercepted. The rest of the Boston College offense, Doug Flutie, Troy Stratford, and Bob Beestick. Stratford, the tailback, he is quick. Second down, Boston College at their own 21-yard line. The defense for Auburn, Williams, Blackard, Othman, Thomas, and Riley up front. The linebackers are Carr and Christopher Martin. Auburn now going with a four-man front and a five-man secondary. Second and ten. The blitz, possibly, as Flutie goes back. Looking for Troy Stratford out of the backfield, and he seemed unsure, Danny, about throwing the football. He certainly did. On the first two passes he's thrown, uh, he's been very unsure. I think that uh, what happened is, Howard, that uh, Auburn came in here with four down linemen and five defensive backs. Harris, Collier, King, and Trinkard in the secondary for Auburn. They have Mark Dormany also in there now in the secondary. Wearing number 46. A third and 10 play coming up for Boston College at their own 21. Sophomore, Doug Flutie, 5 foot 10. And that may be stretching it. Play fake by Flutie. And the connection at the 43 yard line. To Paul Zidanek, covered by Mark Dormany. Paul Zidanek, who had 33 receptions on the year, caught a pass in every game this year, Danny, as we look at it. Let's watch this from the end zone camera. It's a draw fake. You can see him fake. Flutie faking a fake. The draw play. Corner pattern. Zidanek has his man beat. Concentration on the football. And a big first down for Boston College. On a third and ten play, a gain of 23 yards. And a first down. Long count by Flutie. Overthrew the intended receiver, Gerald Phelan. Coming on the play by Mark Dormady. Flutie not, not uh, worrying about putting it up too much. We heard yesterday from uh, Jack Picknell, the Boston College coach, that he might throw it 45 to 50 times. Well, he's got a good start already. He really overthrew the receiver that time, who was wide open over the middle, but he really rifles that football. Nat Caesar in the secondary for Boston College in place of Dormany. Well, for Auburn, rather. 
A second and ten play from the 44-yard line. This is Troy Stratford to the 49. Strong safety Bob Harris made the tackle on the play. Let's go to Steve Grad. Let's go. Oh. Gossett, famous movie star, Grand Marshal. What's your impressions of the Tangerine Ball? Oh, man, this is, this is fantastic. There were some plays I wish I could have half this audience in because I've, I've been playing many plays for empty houses. Okay, Lou yeah. Gossett, fine film star here at the Tangerine Bowl, the Grand Marshal. Thank you, sir. All oh, right. A gain of five on the play. It's a third and five, B.C., between the hash marks at the 49-yard line. And Doug Flutie didn't like something in the secondary for Auburn. He's calling a timeout. Early timeout. Well, uh, you know, we spoke with uh, Pat Dye, and he said that he was going to use a lot of diversions and uh, fake blitzes and come out of the defense, and that's what he did and caused him to call a timeout. No score in the ball game at the 37th Tangerine Ball in Orlando, Florida. Phelan and Zidanek out wide to the left side. A third and five play for B.C. at their own 49-yard line. Failing in motion. Penalty markers fly as Doug Flutie is chased out of bounds in Auburn territory by Bob Harris. But there is a penalty marker on the play as it appears that Flutie had enough for a first down. Normally when you see a flag down in the secondary like that, it's usually defensive holding, but let's watch and see what happens. Good call, coach. Right on the money. Defensive holding is the preliminary indication. Flutie had gotten enough for a first down. And I believe they will take the play. Well, the defensive holding carries with it 10 yards, I believe. So Flutie gained enough for a first down. They now move the football down to the 33-34 yard line of Auburn. Here are the officials. Robin Wood out of the ACC. Scott Dawson. Bill Jamerson, Carl Herakovich, Bill Robertson, or Bud Robertson rather, and Bill Lovett all out of the ACC. So a first down for Boston College after the penalty to the 34-yard line. And the Eagles are threatening early. Phelan in motion. Flutie connecting with his primary receiver, Scott Nislick, and chased out of bounds by the right quarterback, number 18, Tim Drinker. Nislik has caught 39 balls this year. He's going to the blue-gray game. A lot of folks know how good a receiver he really is. He's unbelievable. He caught 11 passes for 229 yards and a touchdown against Penn State. So you can see he's a quality receiver. John Shane out wide to the right, number 85. A second and five play after a five-yard pickup. Auburn showing blitz. A strong safety, number 28, Bob Harris, who had a great game in the finale against Alabama, comes up big here. Here you are in the replay. It's a play-action fake. Watch Harris coming from the left side of your screen there, right on top of Flutie. He never even saw him coming. A loss on the play, back to the 38-yard line. A loss of nine as you look at Bob Harris and an active right quarterback he is. So it'll bring up a third and 14 situation with one setback. Bob Beestick, the fullback behind Doug Flutie. Twin receivers to the left side. The handoff, straight ahead, 30, 25, out of the 20-yard line is Brian Kristoforski. Tackled by Mark Dormady, Kristoforski in for Beestick. Comes in with a big play, running on third and long, and they get a first down. This is really a great call. Let's watch it from our ground camera. It's going to be a draw fake. Flutie goes back, makes it look like a pass. Great blocking up front. Chris Tukowski, just great running here. Look at that, just hard running. A great call, uh, especially in the passing formation. He came from the draw. And oh. I gave him the wrong name. I got all these Polish names up in here. All 18-yard gains are good calls, right? First and 10, Boston College at the 20. Stratford, the ball carrier. Three yards to the 20 or to the 17-yard line. Bob Harris and David King combining for the stop, numbers 28 and 27 respectively. Also, Gerald Robinson, number 95, in on the play. You know, Howard, uh, Coach uh, Becknell said that Flutie a lot of times would come up to the line of scrimmage, and he has the ability to audible out of a play. That prior play when he ran the draw play he audibled out of that end of the draw so it was an excellent call wide to the left side Paul Zdenek 
Boston College from the right hash mark, second and seven. Fake by Flutie. Reception at the 10, down to the five yard line. Tackle made by Greg Carr on Brian Kristoforski. Maybe the best kept secret of the week. <laughs> All right, let's watch it from the end zone. It's going to be a fake into the line of scrimmage, and watch him just outrun the defensive lineman there. Picks up his receiver, Kristoforski, catches it, and almost takes it in for a score. Just a saving tackle there, or that would have been a definite score. Greg Carr made a good tackle. Greg Carr with the save, along with Scott Riley. John Sheen out wide to the right. BC, first and goal at the six. Up inside, Kristoforski to the five. Now Altman, the nose tackle for Auburn, making the stop on Brian Kristoforski out of Detroit, Michigan. One thing I like about Boston College offense, they keep you off balance. They do enough running just to pester you, but their main thrust is their passing. So it'll be second down, goal to go, as Boston College makes a change. Neil Eitan comes in. Correction on that. Brian Brennan comes in as a wide receiver. Eitan is a defensive back. Second and goal. Flutie. For a touchdown. We said at the top of the show that Flutie was the key, and that's one of the reasons why. This is why... Let's watch why Pat Dye thinks this might be the best quarterback in the country. He's looking for Brendan on the end pattern. He fails to throw the ball. He tucks it away. We lost him there, but he's just running up the middle into the end zone. Just a great job by Flutie. That's an individual effort right there. You can't coach that. Let's watch it again. He just avoids some of the on-rushing defensive Auburn players and into the end zone. Just a great effort, Howard. 79 yards and 14 plays. Kevin Snow for the extra point. And it's good. And so Boston College has drawn first blood of the 37th Tangerine Bowl with 10.49 to play first quarter. The Eagles of Boston College leading the Auburn Tigers by the score of 7 to nothing. We'll be back after these words from your local station. A play drive that took 79 yards and 14 plays. Doug Flutie negotiating the last five as Kevin Snow will kick off to Lionel James. And he is dangerous. And Snow kept it away from James. The up back, Allen Evans. To the 25. Allen Evans, number 33, returning the kickoff to the 25-yard line. And for the first time tonight, we'll get a look at the Auburn Tigers offensively. Auburn comes in with a record of eight victories and three defeats. There's the scoring drive. Time of possession very key. Four minutes and 11 seconds. So Auburn takes over first down with quarterback Randy Campbell in the wishbone. Ron O'Neill, Bo Jackson, and Lionel James are behind Randy Campbell. This is Bo Jackson. There goes Bo Jackson and Tracy Turner. Correction, Junior Poles. Junior Poles, a very articulate young man, 6'4", 281 with a big play. And this Boston College team is really fired up. I don't believe anyone blocked him at all. Let's go to Steve Grad. Doug Flutie, quarterback. What was that last play where you scored the touchdown out? It was supposed to be a pass play, a little down and out to the A-back. He's going to try to outrun him to the sideline. But the backer came up and cut off the angle. And I saw a seam up the middle, so I just tucked it under and went. It looked like crazy legs out that way. <laughs> it did whatever works. I don't care what, how it looks or what happens, but that's how it works. Thank you, Doug. Lionel James to the 29. Tony Thurman, the left cornerback, number 45 for Boston College, was there. Lionel Little Train James. A little bit of a guy with a big heart. He can break the big one on you. He's got tremendous 4-5 or five speed. And however we want to mention this early in the ball game, the wishbone is a very defensive a very difficult offense run, and Auburn led the country in the fewest turnovers. This That's an incredible stack, an incredible stack. Third down and four for Auburn. Campbell on the run. 
and Edwards on the reception, first down, Auburn. George Ratajkowski and Vic Crawford helping out. Here's the Auburn offense, Pat Arrington, Tracy Turner, Bishop Reeves, David Jordan, and Jay Jacobs up front. The receivers, Ed West, the tight end, and Mike Edwards, who's played four different positions in his career at the split end. Bo Jackson, Ron O'Neill, Lionel James, the running backs behind Randy Campbell. First down, Auburn after a 14-yard pickup at the 43-yard line. Campbell going upstairs for the distance. Excellent coverage in the secondary. The ball was overthrown to Chris Woods, number one, covered by Tony Thurman. Chris Woods, wide receiver, a junior out of Birmingham, Alabama. Auburn's going to show Boston College they can throw the football, too. Here's Campbell faking play action off the of, uh, wishbone and going deep to Chris Woods on a post pattern, but good coverage down there, excellent coverage. We get a second down coming up for the Tigers. Mike Edwards going out wide to the right. Greg Pratt is in at fullback for Auburn. It is Greg Pratt, the ball carrier, straight ahead. Taken down near midfield, perhaps inside Boston College territory, by T.J. Fitzpatrick. We'll set Boston College's defense for you. Wearing their white jerseys tonight, Russ Joyner, Rob Swanky, Scott Harrington, Junior Poles, and Paul Shaw across the front five. Steve Diossi and T.J. Fitzpatrick, the linebackers. Dave Pereira, Vic Crawford, Tony Thurman, and George Ratajkowski completing the defensive 11 for Boston College. They now have a third and two Auburn at the 49 of B.C. B.C. leading it seven to nothing. Lionel James turning it upfield. And Lionel James almost went the distance. Ed West, the tight end with a good block, and Tony Thurman made the tackle for the uh, the Boston College Eagles. It's a good look at uh, from the ground level how the belly sits. Fake to the fullback, and he comes down, reads the defense, then flips out to Lionel James, and just great running. 85, Ed West threw a good block on there, and James did the rest. A pickup of 18 yards and a first down for the Tigers of Auburn. Little train, Lionel James. Chris Woods out wide to the left side. Campbell to Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson to the 20. Vic Crawford, number five, making the tackle on freshman Bo Jackson. Another running back, number 34, and there are a lot of them this Here's year. A, uh, opposite way, the action fake, dumps it out to Bo Jackson. He does the rest. Look at this tremendous athlete, about 6'1", 225 pounds. He punishes the defensive back. Here's another angle. Just flipped out of the backfield, little flare pattern, and he's down and picks up another Auburn first down. Inside handoff to Bo Jackson. This time, not much is there. Seven minutes, 15 seconds remaining. First quarter of play at the 37th Tangerine Bowl. Tackle on the play, Steve Biasi and T.J. Fitzpatrick, the linebackers. We're in the first quarter in Boston College, leading it by the score of 7 to nothing. Bo Jackson, only a freshman. So many great players coming out to play as freshmen that start. Chris Woods goes out wide to the right. And Mike Edwards split off the ball on the left side. Lionel James in the slot to the left. The second and nine play. Campbell to Woods at the 10. And out of bounds at the seven-yard line. Chased out of there by Tony Thurman. I thought they weren't supposed to pass the ball a lot when they had the wishbone. <laughs> Especially that formation. They had a slot formation there. They had Woods stood out. And they had Lionel uh, James in the slot over there on the, on the opposite side and runs an out pattern. And Campbell can throw that football pretty good also. Randy Campbell, 51% thrower as you look at Jack Picknell. And yes, he didn't believe that they would throw the ball that much. Terry Walker and Lionel James join Ron O'Neill in the backfield for Auburn. A first and goal, Randy Campbell to Lionel James and blasted out of bounds inside the five by Vic Crawford. This is why I'd rather be up in the broadcast booth. We're going to see a shot here by Vic Crawford. Here's the 
Campbell coming down the line. He pitches it the last second to James and crash. That's two coconuts going together right there. Something has to give. <laughs> Bo Jackson comes back in the ball game. Chris Woods splits out wide to the left side. Second and goal, Auburn, at the Boston College three-yard line. James Jackson. Now here's Campbell on the keeper and an excellent defensive play by Boston College. Making the play, I believe, was Paul Shaw, the defensive end. Jack Bicknell, the head football coach. Cowboy Jack Bicknell in his second year at Boston College. And there a look at Randy Campbell, the fine quarterback for the Auburn Tigers. I think they're forcing Campbell into a passing situation. Shaw made a great play on there, so Auburn has a third and long. A loss of three. Third down, goal to go, Auburn. To the wide side of the field to the right. Campbell inside the five, back to the three. And chased down by T.J. Fitzpatrick. So it'll bring up a fourth down goal to go, and Pat Dye elect electing to send on Al Del Greco in the field goal unit. I'll tell you, Diossi blitzed on that play. That's the one that stopped that play from even developing. They tried to run the uh, option, but he couldn't run the option. Diossi had uh, blitzed in there, so he had to just go up the middle. So Auburn has to settle for a field goal, hopefully. Mike Mann, number 17, will hold for Al Del Greco. This one will be a 19-yard effort with an angle to the right. And it's perfect. So Auburn gets on the board the first time they have the football, and we have ourselves a 7-3 football game at the 37th Tangerine Bowl. When we resume, it'll be Auburn kicking off to the Boston College Eagles. We'll be back in just a moment. Defensive huddle for the Boston College Eagles. They did a great job that Auburn had it at the three-yard line. And BC delighted, I'm sure, to settle give up for a three-point field goal. 7-3, Boston College leading with 5.07 remaining in the first quarter. Howie Brown and Kenny Bell are back deep to await the kick from Al Del Greco. It's Brown at the three. Brown out across the 25-yard line. Tackled by Chuck Clanton for Auburn. Thus far, Danny Abramowitz, it has been more than just as advertised. 50,000 plus getting treated to a whale of a football game early on. And a, little, a couple little surprises here, too. Auburn putting the ball in the air more than they normally do. So Doug Flutie brings the Boston College Eagles. Out of bounds. Just an excellent job by Flutie that time. Auburn came up and faked the blitz. They disguised it. He audibled out to a quick out. He knew the wide receiver had man-to-man -man coverage. 76 yards, 12 plays. The time of possession, 522, and that wishbone does that. And the field goal by Al Del Greco. The gain of the play to the 36-yard line. Second down and one, Boston College. Failing in motion. Flutie on the run. And overthrew Scott Nislett. Dennis Collier and Tim Brickard on the play. And I believe there's a penalty marker thrown at the line of scrimmage. Holding the preliminary call against the Boston College football team. When you throw the ball as many times as Boston College throws the football, you're bound to get some holding penalties in there. We have two ranked football teams here tonight. Boston College finished 20th ranked in, by UPI, the coaches' poll. First time in 40 years that they've been ranked at the end of the season in the top 20. And, of course, Auburn ranked 17th UPI, 19th Associated Press. There's the call by the referee, Robin Wood. There you see the arithmetic on Doug Flutie. Broke the Boston College record with 2,739 yards throwing the football. The penalty on the hold sets it back to the 26-yard line. Second down and 12, Boston College. Failing wide to the left. 
And Zidanek wide to the right. Stratford the tailback. Across the 35. Greg Carr, the all-Southeast Conference linebacker, the first man to meet him. I just love this call. You don't try, even after a penalty, you don't try to get it all back in one play. Everyone says, put it in the air. Here's the draw play. He catches Auburn off guard, right up the middle. And Stratford could really jitterbug in there. Good hard running. He knows when to get down, though, too. <laughs> Boston College back on schedule after the pickup of 10 yards. So it'll be third down and a yard for B.C. Stratford. Great second effort. Third effort for the 44. Tim Drinker, the right quarterback, the first man to meet him, but Boston College has chalked up another first down. I'm going to show all those young halfbacks out there second effort. Good blocking at the point of attack, but he gets hit. Watch his second effort. He picks up some more yards, picks those feet up. He's hit again. Watch those feet keep churning. He's not going to get down. He's still going. Finally, about eight Auburn players get on top of him. He goes down. And a pickup of eight yards in the play. First down, B.C. at their own 44-yard line. Looty. Going to tuck it on and run out of bounds at the 45-yard line. That is safe and sorry. Chased out of bounds by the strong safety, Bob Harris. I can remember the game that Bobby Harris had against Alabama in the final game of the year. He had two interceptions. And probably one of the main reasons why Auburn upset the Crimson Tide. Well, he also made a big play down on the goal line. I think it was third and short at the goal line, and he made a big tackle to prevent him and make uh, Auburn kick a field goal. A gain of a yard, second and nine. Boston College with 340 remaining first quarter in a 7-3 Boston College lead. This is their second possession with one setback. Gerald Phelan in motion. And Flutie back to throw. Intercepted by Mark Dormany. And return to the 44-yard line. Tackled by Brian Brennan. Pass intended for Scotty Nyslick over the middle. Just watch it. Here's Flutie dropping back. He's trying to hit Shane on a deep post. He just... He doesn't see Mark Normandy come right across and pick the ball off. He's looking for some blockers. Brings the ball back. A heck of a return. Finally gets nailed and knocked down. Here's another angle. Just right in front. I think he, Howard, I don't believe he ever saw Dormany. 44-yard line on the run by Ron O'Neill, the big fullback. Boston College, with, or rather Auburn now, with great field position at the BC 41-yard line. Ron O'Neill, who gained 371 yards rushing this year, averaged four points a crack, and that's good, except when your other backfield teammates, Bo Jackson and Lionel James, average over six and a half a crack. That's just the average. <laughs> Second and seven play. Again, it is O'Neill. This time, T.J. Fitzpatrick leads the charge with help from Paul Shaw. Gain to the 40-yard line, a pickup of one. It'll be third down in what would appear to be a passing situation. A lot of people wonder why they hand off to the fullback. The quarterback is reading the linebackers in there. If the linebackers are flowing out to Jackson and James, they hand the ball up the middle to the fullback, O'Neill. Third and six from the 40. The Auburn Tigers. Greg Pratt. Near a first down before met by Steve Diossi, the left side linebacker, and they may have to bring the chains out for this one, although it appears he's got enough for a first down. Robin Wood, the official, looking it over, and yes, it is a first down for Robert at the 33 yard line of Boston College. 50,000 plus on hand for the 37th Tangerine Bowl. Chris Woods comes in as a wide receiver for Auburn and immediately goes out wide to the left side. Looked like your sports coat last night you had on. Yeah. <laughs> Only calmer. First and 10, 34-yard line for Auburn. Greg Pratt, the fullback. Jackson and James. The pitch to Lionel James. Lionel James is still on his feet. Finally popped out of bounds. By number 99, Steve Diossi. Good block by Ed West. 
This watch is right at ground level. You're going to see what Campbell coming down the line. He pitches it immediately to Lionel James. Watch this move. Thurman hits him. He doesn't have him. Crawford misses him. He finally hit, steps out of bounds, or he'd have been 88 and out the gate. The gain to the 25 and a pickup of eight. Second down and about a yard. A little more than a yard. Campbell looking for Edwards and a diving reception by Mike Edwards at the 10-yard line. Mike Edwards, who came to Auburn, he has now played four different positions in his career. This is Campbell dropping back, and watch the receiver come back to the football here. He runs an out pattern. The ball is a little on the throne, but he comes back and makes a diving cage catch. Just a good effort by Edwards. Inside the 10-yard line, Mike Edwards, the senior out of Bradenton, Florida. 6'4", 194. And Auburn has it first and goal at the 9-yard line, a pickup of 16. Greg Pratt up inside as Boston College's front line with help from the linebackers Deossi and Fitzpatrick corral the sophomore Greg Pratt Jack Bicknell in his second year at Boston College they call him Cowboy Jack loves country music <laughs> Boston College is tough down here on the goal line Auburn was down here earlier and had to settle for a field goal so let's see if they can stick up down here second down goal to go for Auburn at the seven yard line of Boston College Jackson to the one yard line. Paul Shaw, the first man to get to him. And Jeff Parks, number 82, just committee of picture, comes into the ball game for Ed West. Or rather for Mike Edwards. So they're going with two tight ends. Third and goal, Auburn. Watch Bo Jackson go over the top. Didn't get there. I think there's a fumble also on the play. You're going to see Bo Jackson really go over the top. Campbell just takes a snap, fire out low by the offensive lineman. Jackson tries to go over the top, but uh, just a good hard hit there by Perea. Number 41, Perea, big saving tackle. Dave Pereira making the tackle on the play, and Auburn calls for a timeout. With a timeout on the field, three seconds to go before the end of the first quarter. Austin College leading Auburn 7-3. We're now fourth down, goal to go, and you can see on the right side of your picture how close that ball is. Look at it right there, about half the distance of the football from the goal line, and it looks like Auburn's going to go for it. Closer than that's eyelash. Parks and West, two tight ends of the game. Fourth down and goal at the half-yard line. Campbell to the goal line. I don't believe he got in. Russ Joyner, the left defensive end and the co-captain for the Eagles of Boston College, made this man, Pat Dye, a little bit concerned. Watch this replay. Here's Campbell faking in the line of Jackson. Campbell down the line. He gets nailed there, and he just can't take it in. Just a great play there. That is the last play of the first quarter. Boston College leading Auburn 7-3 will return for the second quarter after these messages from your local station. Thirty-seven tangerine ball, and they are being treated have been treated thus far to a whale of a first quarter. 7-3 Boston College on top, and after a magnificent goal line stand by the Eagles, Boston College and Doug Flutie and company now have to march 99 and a half yards of Central Florida real estate. And that's tough, but after a big goal line stands, uh, you're fired up offensively. Your defense just does a great job down there, so it gives you a little momentum. Pat Dye his second year at Auburn. First bowl game for Auburn since the 74 Gator Bowl. This guy turned the East Carolina program around and produced six consecutive winning seasons at East Carolina. The reason why you're seeing all the zeros on the scoreboard clock 
is because they're waiting to reset the clock to the 15 minute mark to begin the second quarter. Continuing what I was saying about Pat Dye, after he went to East Carolina for six years, he coached one year at Wyoming in 1980 and produced their first winning record in eight years. Of course, he was an assistant coach under the great Bear Bryant for nine years in charge of the linebackers and recruiting. And of course, he's, as they refer to affectionately, as one of Bear's boys. I tell you, he, he's done a good job at Auburn. They've got a good football team. They've got some young offensive linemen. They're going to be uh, heard from next year. They've got Bo Jackson, who is uh, the leading ground gainer as a freshman. First time in the history of the school, a freshman led uh, Auburn in rushing. You know, Howard, the amazing thing, you said 50,000. We were talking to the bowl committee earlier today, and they said they could have sold another 20,000 tickets. The clock is still being worked on, and uh, I think this will give Boston College a chance to think of uh, some play uh, to run down here. You know, knowing Flutie, he's liable to do anything. As indicated, he had 20 interceptions this year. But we were talking to Coach Beck now, and he says, well, why do he do that? Because he does a lot of uh, things. He, he gambles a lot of times. It, it creates good situations for it, but sometimes you're going to throw in the interceptions when you do that. Well, while they... Get the clock rewound of 15 minutes. So we begin the second quarter. We'll take this commercial timeout with the score. Boston College 7, Auburn 3. All right, the clock is ready, and so is BC on their own half-yard line. Two tight ends in the ball game. They get three tight ends in the game. Chris Kaforski to the one-yard line. Tackle by Greg Carr. Let's go to Steve Brad. About that goal line stand against Auburn. Well, we were in our goal line defense, and they ran the uh, triple option to the right. I tackled the uh, fullback, didn't have the ball. The quarterback kept the ball. George Ratajkowski came up and made a great play on the tackle. You guys look like a brick wall out there. Yeah, we love to hit. We're getting out there. We got to keep it up. We can't keep letting them go down because one of these times they're going to score. We got to stop them in the midfield before they get to the goal line. Steve Diossi. They're still at the half yard line. Stratford the deep pitch, and maybe to the three as the penalty marker flies. Only a holding penalty when it's thrown in that area. Wait for the word from Robin Wood. There it is. It is holding. Auburn may refuse the penalty because the game was only to about the three-yard line, maybe the two-and-a-half. I think they'll definitely call uh, refuse the penalty. It'll make it a third and seven, so I think uh, Auburn will decline the penalty. We're getting some substitutions in the game for Boston College. Paul Zedenek comes in, a wide receiver. Jeff Jackson came in also for Auburn. And Paul Zidanek is in for Boston College. He goes out wide to the left side. John Chain out wide to the right. BC in a pro set, third down and eight. Moody in his own end zone. Thrown too hard, intended for Scott Nislick, and Dennis Collier was right there defending on the play number 47. And so Boston College now will have Scott Nislick, the punter, deep in his end zone to kick it away. And Auburn should get great field position out of this. I thought that was a catchable ball there. Uh, just a great job by Boston College offensive line. Lionel James led the nation in punt returns, averaging 15.7 yards per return. Nislick averaging 42 and a half yards per kick with the shadow of his goal line to his back. And he shanked it. An 18-yard punch for Scott Nislick, and they mark it at the 22-yard line. That looked like one of my wedge shots there. <laughs> About a 7-iron. A, seven a bad iron. one. Into Auburn. the wind. Auburn with superb field position at the Boston College 22-yard line. Edwards comes out wide to the left side. O'Neal back in at fullback with Bo Jackson and Lionel James. Campbell to Bo Jackson. Super block by Lionel James. As Vic Crawford, number five, made the tackle on freshman Bo Jackson. 
This is just a great job by Campbell. He comes down, fakes to the fullback, O'Neill, and comes down, reads, pitches immediately to Bo Jackson. Watch this block by James. Just a great block there, and Bo Jackson takes it down deep into the territory. Crawford tackles him, saves it from a touchdown. Line of scrimmage, the nine-yard line. Vincent Bo Jackson. First and goal. Ron O'Neill, the fullback to the five. Doug Geyer, number nine. And George Ratajkowski, number 15 for BC. But not before O'Neill got it inside the five to the four-yard line. Second and goal, Auburn. Boston College leading at seven to three, but the Tigers of Auburn threatening here. They send Mike Edwards out wide to the right. O'Neill to the three. Willie Howell in the game for Auburn at running back in place of Bo Jackson. As Chris Woods comes into the play from the sideline and Mike Edwards goes out. O'Neill's been getting a lot of work tonight. This is probably the busiest he's been in the first half of any game of the year. They mark it at the one third and goal, Auburn, at the BC one. O'Neill, and I don't believe he got there. Steve Diossi filled the hole. <laughs> Did he fill the hole? He's unbelievable. Boston College, this is the third time that Auburn's been down here. And uh, the only thing they have to show for it is three points. So they bring Ed West in, the tight end. Leave Jeff Parks in there, two tight ends. Chris Woods comes out, number one, and Bo Jackson back in the game. He is that close to a touchdown, and you have to believe that Bo Jackson will get the call over the top. But the top for Boston College is big, 6'2", 6'2", and 6'4", in the middle. Bo Jackson, touchdown. Let's watch Bo Jackson leap right into the screen. Just up and over. Just a great effort. And also, Auburn's offensive line really did a good job of keeping them defensive linemen down. So Bo Jackson could jump over the top. Let's watch it from another angle. Look at this leaping ability. Just up and over. He ran right up the back of Ron O'Neill, the fullback. <laughs> and over. Up his back and over. Al Del Greco for the extra point out of the hold of Mike Mann as Auburn has taken the lead. And the kick is good. So Auburn, for the first time in this 37th Tangerine Bowl, has taken the lead. They lead it by the score of 10-7 with 11.34 to play. Second quarter, we'll be back after these words from your local station. Taking the lead for the first time in the ball game. They lead it 10-7 as we begin We're early on in the second quarter. Boston College's defense, Howie Brown and Ken Bell, awaiting the kick of Dave Blanks. This is Howie Brown. Howie Brown to the 29-yard line. Now let's go to Mike Hogwood. Well, the play simply called Bo over the top. It's They stopped you one time. Matter of fact, they stopped you a couple times down there, but you weren't to be denied on that last score. Yes, but you know, the line, they come off and block real well, and, uh, and the space was there. That's all that I had to do was get up off the ground and go to the top. Offense is having success tonight. Yes, they are. They're blocking real good. The first drive, it you know, they they uh, stopped us, but we got the feel of things, and I think we're going to continue to move the ball. Auburn's Bo Jackson. Hi, everybody. Back in Miami. And Troy Stratford breaking into the outside. Good yardage on first down. Chased down by Dennis Collier. In case you didn't hear the last couple of seconds of what Bo Jackson said, he said, hi, everybody, in Bessemer, Alabama. <laughs> where Bo's from. <laughs> He looked like he said they had him taken care of on the ground, but we forgot to mention he looked like the space shuttle jumping over the top. A gain on the play of nine yards for Troy Stratford. Second and one, Stratford on the quick count, first down. Ben Thomas, the right tackle, number 91, was there to make the initial hit. 
Troy Stratford, only five foot nine, out of Linden, New Jersey, another freshman. Boston College starts one freshman, one sophomore, four juniors, and five seniors. Here, a look at the time of possession: 2:26 for Auburn. A five-play drive covering 22 yards after that shank Scott Nislick punt. Howard, you're talking about a mismatch. Grafford's 5'9", 175. Ben Thomas is 6'4", 264. A little David and Goliath story, right? One setback for Boston College. Twins to the left. And Flutie back to throw. The connection to Brian Brennan, tackled by Chris Martin. Brian Brennan was doubtful for tonight's ball game. He had broken his collarbone in the fourth game against Temple returning a punt, and then he returned in the last game against Holy Cross, had a touchdown call back of over 70 yards, but a healthy Brian Brennan is dangerous. Well, they need him in the game because he's a deep threat. He's 4-5 speed. He has 25.4 yards per catch. That's potent. Gain of seven on the play, second and three. Boston College at their own 46-yard line. He stick the lone setback. Flutie under a rush, and he threw it a whole lot quicker than he wanted to. Ben Thomas put the rush on him, number 91, along with number 90, Vernon Blacker. And the reason he had to throw it, they had a safety blitz on that time. Bob Harris came from the safety position, and Flutie did a good job there just releasing the football. Sophomore Ben Thomas out of Aub Ashburn, Georgia. The Auburn defense shows five seniors, three juniors, and three sophomores averaging 245 across the front line. <laughs> Third and three. Boston College from their own 46. A whole lot of multiple sets for the Eagles. Rich Shrigley in a tight end on the right side. Flutie back to throw on third down. Trying to set the screen to the far side. Troy Stratford out of the backfield. First down, tackled by Chris Martin, along with help from Dow Altman. Let's watch it from the end zone. They've got a hard rush on Flutie this time, but he has a perfect play called a screen play, but you don't teach these kind of moves. Watch Stratford here. He avoids two tacklers. There's two more tacklers right there. Two more. There's another one, and a first down. Just a tremendous effort by Stratford. Shane goes wide to the left. Brian Brennan. Wide to the left and Shane wide to the right. Flutie on first down. This is Brian Brennan to the 26-yard line. Free safety, Dennis Collier. Here it is. A straight drop back pass. He's going to look for Brennan on a crossing pattern. He threads the needle between two Auburn defenders right on the money. Just a great effort. Brennan avoids a few tacklers and picks up some extra yardage. And a saving tackle there by Dennis Collier. First down, Boston College at the 26th of Auburn. Auburn leading at 10-7, 8.51 to play second quarter. Deep sideline route, or well, the sideline route intended for Rich Shrigley. Now let's go to Steve Grad, who has the Speaker of the House, Tip O'Neill. Hold on to that thought. We will have Mr. O'Neill, who's on the sidelines with Steve Gred. Well, we got some high-priced talent down there, don't we? <laughs> I thought they were up there working up in Washington, D.C. Second down and 10 for Boston College. Rich Shrigley, the intended receiver, played basketball for the Eagles last year when they went to the final eight. Second and 10 now, 26-yard line of Auburn. B-Stick and Stratford, the setbacks in a pro set. Stratford up inside, maybe to the line of scrimmage, and that's about all. Ronnie Ballou, the linebacker, quickly made the stop. Now let's go to the sidelines and Steve Grad. I'm up in the uh, seats here with the Speaker of the House, Mr. Tip O'Neill. What do you think of the game so far, sir? Great. Beautiful ball game. Beautiful anybody's game so far. How's this different from when you were at BC and play? Oh, well, they're, uh, they're Giants by comparison. <laughs> yeah. It was just a couple of years after I left Washington College where we became mighty in football at that particular time. I think the year after 40 years, we've come back. <laughs> is this going to be the start of a dynasty for me? the start of a dynasty. We get all kids out there, freshmen and sophomores. We're going to see Boston College for years to come. Okay, any special message for the country? Any special message for the country? Well, tonight I'm rooting for BC. My first thoughts are here tonight. Oh. And a Merry Christmas to all. <laughs> okay, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Tip O'Neill.
Doug Smith, the injured Auburn player, number 99, off Southeast Conference tackle. Howard really made that play for Auburn last time. They had a blitz on, and Chris Martin came right up the gut. And Boston College had a draw play right where Chris Martin was blitzing, and he stopped it in his tracks. Doug Smith looks to be okay. Maybe just got his bell rung a little bit. How can you hurt anyone? 6'6", 265. He was first team all SEC. He's replaced in the ball game by Gerald Williams, number 98, only a freshman, 6'4", 269. Third and 10, B.C. at the 26 of Auburn, out of a pro set. To the end zone, off the shoulder pads of John Shane. Double covered by David King and Bob Harris. With Dennis Collier back there as well. We're going to show you how strong of an arm Doug Flutie has. He's brought back past Shane's on a deep flag route. He's double covered down here. He puts the ball between both of them right on the money. And Shane just drops the football. Just an excellent pass. Kevin Snow will come in out of the hold of John Lockery and try a 43-yarder. He is 0 for 2 in this neighborhood. Hit the crossbar. You're talking about something close. It's a good snap here. Good hold. Kicks it awfully high. The wind must have got a hold of it. You can see it coming down, and it's going to hit right on the crossbar. It's unbelievable. They say football's a game of inches. I believe it. How about a six inch short of a successful field goal try? 8.09 to go, second quarter. Auburn up by three points. We're back to the 37th Tangerine Bowl. Howard David, Danny Abramowitz, Mike Hogwood, Steve Grad, and a cast of 50,000. Randy Campbell, 4 of 5 for 52 yards, throwing the ball. Up inside to the fullback, Greg Pratt, number 36, tackled by Steve Diossi. Leading tackler on the club. Auburn with a substitution, Tommy Carroll comes in, number 84 of the split end. And Carroll goes out wide to the right side. A gain of five, second and five at the 31 of the Auburn Tigers. Out of that wishbone. Lionel James turning the corner. Takes a heck of a shot at the 34-yard line by the left side linebacker, Steve Diossi. Steve Diossi, very active Danny Abramowitz, and we know how excited he can get. Watch him. Here he is. He's leading tackler on BC's team. He cuts to the inside. He's trying to get out to that pitch, but he gets knocked off his feet. Watch the hustle. Back up on his feet. Get after him, Diossi. You think that's not hustle? That's just a competitive effort. You cannot teach anything like that. Clayton Buford comes out wide to the left. A wide receiver, a sophomore. For Auburn, third down and two. Campbell. Terry Walker, first down, Auburn. Terry Walker, number eight, a sophomore from Ashburn, Georgia, comes in, carries the ball for his first time, and gets a first down. Tackled by Ross Joyner, Russ Joyner, the left defensive end. And Lionel James, he's not only a great runner, he threw a great block on the play also. George Ratajkowski also went on the last tackle, the gain to the 38-yard line, and a first down. Ed West comes out as tight end. And he's replaced by another wide receiver, Chris Woods. So Woods to the left and Buford to the right. Pratt the fullback, James and Jackson in the backfield behind Randy Campbell. Campbell looking to throw. This is Walker. Drop for a loss to the 34-yard line by Steve Diossi. Steve Diossi came into this ballgame with a reputation of being very animated after making a tackle a la Mark Gastineau and after <laughs> right. I saw what happened to Gastineau today although he had three quarterback sacks the final story is who wins the ball game <laughs> they call him Mr. Wildman a loss of the play back to the 34 yard line 
They get second and 15 for Auburn. Tommy Carroll comes out wide to the left. Forty-five to the 40 is Allen Evans inside the 40 of Boston College. Vic Crawford in on the play with Paul Shaw. Takes it to fullback and pitches it immediately to Allen Evans. I don't know where Allen Evans came from. He's a third-team halfback, but he does a great job. Look at him picking his way through that traffic. Campbell made that play work. The defensive end came down on him immediately, and he pitched the ball out to Evans. 29-yard pickup on the run by Allen Evans. First down, Auburn, 37-yard line, Boston College. Campbell going for the distance. Buford with the catch. He beat George Ratajkowski. The ball was underthrown, but still Buford made the catch. This is a great throw. Campbell fakes, comes back. He's going all the way to Buford down the sideline. Ratajkowski's on the cover. Not too bad. It gets him turned around. Game-saving tackle, Buford Clayton. Just a great job. 34-yard pickup on the pass play to Clayton Buford, a sophomore out of Florida, 6'190 pounds. Touchdown, Willie Howell. Driving through a gaping hole and finds that end zone, has a nose for the end zone and dives in. Here's another angle. There's now good blocking out there at the point of attack and he dives right in the end zone. How scores a touchdown. Al Del Greco for the extra point. And it's perfect. Auburn has lit the lamp again. They have taken a 17-7 lead with 4.49 remaining second quarter. We'll return to the 37th Tangerine Ball after these messages from your local station. Dave Blanks will kick off number four for Auburn to Howie Brown or Ken Bell. 17-7 Auburn. They've scored the last 17 points unanswered. Howie Brown started to run it out. It looked like he touched <laughs> the goal line very close, but they rule it a touchback. They'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. Now let's go to Steve. He's all backwards, I'll tell you. Let's go to Mike Hogwood with Randy Kimball. Thank you very much, Howard. Randy, you're operating with the second teamers that time. Willie Howell got the touchdown. Clayton Buford made a big catch. Didn't seem to matter who was in there. No, everybody's playing real good. Uh, everybody's sky high. It seems right now everything we're doing is working for us, and everybody's just playing as hard as they can. It doesn't matter to me. and doesn't matter to coaches who's in there, and everybody's doing a great job. Did you know before the game you're going to throw it this much? Uh, we had planned to, but you know we we planned to do that before and never had, so I'm kind of surprised, but I'm really enjoying it. Auburn's quarterback, Randy Campbell. Campbell, 5 of 6 for 77 yards. Outshining Doug Flutie, the more celebrated passer thus far. Flutie on the bootleg, throwing it on the run, and it's dropped by Scott Nislick. Nislick started a run before he had control of the football. Well, this guy with a great haircut, isn't he? Boy, it looks like a run ahead. <laughs> a war eagle. War eagles. Mask. The mascot for Auburn is War Eagle 5. There's the play and drive, the seventh play, 74-yard drive, and a time of possession, 449. 443 remaining in the second quarter. This shows you the amazing depth of Auburn. They can hit you with so many different people. Second down and 10 for Boston College at their own 20-yard line. Auburn leads it 17-7. It has been a thriller thus far. Flutie to Brennan. Brennan could go the distance. Brian Brennan had one more man to beat. Dennis Collier, and Collier tripped him up. This play goes 57 yards. Here's Flutie just straight rock back. Great pass protection by the BC line. An out pattern. Brennan, it looks like he's going to go out of bounds, but he stays right down the sidelines. He's taking it down. He decides to cut back across the grain. 
He's looking for trips over his own man a little bit there. One last guy. Just a great job by Collier, prevented that from a touchdown. 57 yards in total. First down, Boston College at the 22 of Auburn. One setback. Kristoforski. Flutie still has it. A solid hit on Rich Shrigley. And I'll tell you, Paul Zidanek, a wide receiver, was really upset in the end zone because he was all alone. Mark Dormady took a great shot on the wide receiver, Rich Shrigley. Boy, he really does take a shot here. It's a good counteraction move in there. Flutie comes to the outside. He's looking for the receiver over the middle. Watch this. This is when you need a flak jacket when you take that kind of a shot. Man, oh, man. Ball thrown a little bit behind Shrigley. Nevertheless, second and ten. Boston College at the 22 of Auburn. High formation. Stratford the deep man in the eye with Christoforski the fullback. Twin receivers to the left. Flutie had time. And Flutie in trouble. Still made the connection at the 17 or 18 yard line. Quincy Williams made the hit on the receiver for Boston College. Brian Kristoforski out of the backfield. I'll tell you what, Flutie must have eyes behind his head because he was just trapped back there and he made a, a few maneuvers and Kristoforski was wise to come back and get him out of the bind and make him catch and pick up some yardage. They pick up five and it's third down and about six. 85 and a half for a first down. Blitz is on. Flutie looking for Zidane. Quincy Williams, the defensive end, was coming on the rush. Mark Dormady defending on Zidane in the end zone. That was awful close to pass interference. Could go one way or the other. He was trying to hit him on a corner pattern. All you wide receivers always screaming <laughs> pass interference. That's right. It's always the defender's fault. <laughs> And so number two, Kevin Snow will come in and try a field goal out of the hold of John Lockery from 35 yards away and an angle to the right. Plenty of distance. And it is good. The Boston College scores for the first time since the opening drive. And Auburn's lead is cut to 17 to 10 with 341 remaining second quarter. We'll be back after these messages. 31st on the Mislu Network, Hall of Fame and Blue Bonnet Bowls. Terry Walker. Pitches it back to James. Lionel James. I thought Walker had a moment terribly. <laughs> they were wrestling for it. So, no, I got it. You got it. There's Terry Walker, number eight. The return inside the 20. And I guess ideally that's what every every kicker wants to do is keep the ball inside the 20-yard line. But, you know, they, in the pros, what they normally do is really award men who make tackles inside the 20 so Boston College did a good job the Razorbacks and the Gators on New Year's Eve the Blue Bonnet Ball on the Mislu Television Network first and 10 Auburn at their own 19 yard line O'Neill the fullback with some tough yards Steve Diossi the left side linebacker made the tackle on the play with 325 remaining in the first half and stay with us at halftime you will see an extravaganza that you may never see again. They have put together quite a show here at the 37th Tangerine Bowl. They really do have a great show. Auburn just keeps running backs in and out. There. They just have tremendous depth in that backfield. Second down and five. Greg Pratt, the fullback, close to a first down. Rush Joyner, the left defensive end, number 88, the co-captain for Boston College, made the tackle. It's going to be short of a first down. They marked his progress to the 27-yard line. There's the drive, the scoring drive for BC that resulted in that 35-yard field goal by Kevin Snow. Third and three Auburn at their own 27. BC showing blitz. Up inside to the fullback, Greg Pratt, close to a first down. Good. I think he might be a little short, Howard, about a half a yard short. Well, 
If he didn't make it, it's because Junior Poles, the right defensive tackle for Boston College, filled the hole very well. No, he's got it made. Poles did a good job. I think the second effort gave uh, Auburn the first down. Randy Campbell, quarterback for Auburn, looking over the measurement, and S.D. Biasi not too happy with the decision. A first down for Auburn. As Ron O'Neill comes back in, replacing Greg Pratt at fullback. Tommy Carroll goes out, replaced by Mike Edwards. It was billed as an exciting football game, and it hasn't let us down. As far as advertised. Pat Dye, the head coach of Auburn, his team on top, 17 to 10. First down, Auburn. Campbell got Edwards at the 40. Edwards to the 46-yard line of Boston College, where he is met by number five, Vic Crawford. Here's Campbell faking to the fullback, O'Neal coming down the line, then dropping back deep. He's looking all the time in the world. He finds Edwards wide open over the middle. It must have been a broken coverage. He's looking for a soft spot to ball, the ball right here. Finally, Crawford brings him down. One knee gets up and wants to run again. A 25-yard pickup and a first down. Auburn. 46-yard line of BC. Campbell over the middle. Chris Woods, and he could be gone. Chased down, Chris Woods, and saved the touchdown. Dave Pereira made the tackle. Also, just watch it here. Campbell going back. He's looking to one side. Decides to come on a stop route over here to Woods, who avoids the tackler. Watch the hustle by Diossi coming behind Woods here. A game-saving tackle. That's just great hustle from the linebacker coming all the way from the linebacking position, making the tackle 25 yards downfield. First and goal, Auburn at the 7 of Boston College. Lionel James taken off his feet at the line of scrimmage and an excellent tackle by Tony Thurman the left quarterback who's slow getting up only 55 seconds remaining in the second quarter and Auburn will spend the time out here they still have one timeout remaining Tony Thurman might have injured his left arm as Randy Campbell comes to the sidelines Randy Campbell thus far is seven for eight for 141 yards. And they said he wasn't a passer? <laughs> I'd hate to see if he decided to pass. He's doing a good job. Thurman did a good job that time too, Howard. Came up from his cornerback position and made an excellent one-on-one -on -one tackle. Pat Dye, All-America, 1960 for Georgia. An academic All-America. And in his senior year, he played three postseason All-Star games. Made the transition from the playing field to the coaching sidelines, I would say, fairly well. He did an excellent job. Everywhere he's gone, as you mentioned, he's been a winning coach. And that's the key. You get labeled with the, with, the ta with the tag winner on you, and it takes you a long way. Of course, his mentor won a few games in his time. Bear Bryant won over 320 ball games. Still has one more to go before he retires. A lot of coaches that have coached under Bear Bryant has come out where his... Uh, Take Von Phillips coach to the a &M with uh, the Bear. You know, it's funny when he mentioned the Bear, he said, Bear said that there's got to be a change at the top of Alabama. Bum said he thought he was talking about the president of the university. Second and goal, Auburn at the seven yard line of Boston College. Campbell with a super play by Bo Jackson. Jackson with one hand kept that ball from being fumbled. I tell you, that's an unbelievable play. I can see why Auburn had a successful season. He fakes into the fullback Pratt. He comes down the line, watch his basketball pass. Up over the top of two man, one-handed catch. He runs through one tackler, tight ropes the side. Look at that. Great effort and in getting into the end zone. I tell you, I've seen some talent. That's a freshman too. Bo Jackson is a freshman. My, oh my, Bo Jackson with sensational athletic ability. Campbell didn't do too bad there, flipping it over two guys' heads. Del Greco, snap is too high, Mike Mann, the holder, and a quarterback looking to throw it in the end zone, and it's blocked. So Auburn fails, and the snap from center was too high on the extra point. 
And if you didn't believe the look of that touchdown the first time, Bo Jackson ran it in for seven yards. Look at it again. Just watch it again. He fakes to the fullback. He comes down the line like the option quarterback. He gets trapped here. He flips it over top of two defenders. Watches one-handed catch. Looks it in all the way. He has, runs right through one tackler there. I think it's Crawford. Watch him right along the sidelines here. Watch this. Just great ability. Knows where the end zone in and gets in. Auburn has now scored the last three times they've had the football. And they've been down there about five times. Boston College made two great goal line stands early in the game, or this score would have been uh, a lot worse than it is. An 81-yard drive in seven plays. Culminating with a seven-yard Bo Jackson run. Just super. Key plays in the drive, the 25-yard pass to Mike Edwards and a 39-yard pass and run by Chris Woods. Blanks with the kickoff, and it is short. Howie Brown at the 10. Down at the 29-yard line with 41 seconds remaining. Pat Thomas for Auburn made the tackle. So BC, let's face it now, BC's got the arm of Doug Flutie. Even though there's 41 seconds remaining, he can get it down the field in a hurry. And they have two timeouts. There's nothing to panic. They can get down with the ability that Flutie has in this Boston College team. They can get down there and get a score before the half. Ask the Jets about what Miami did to them today. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody has to ask them. They know. Line of scrimmage, the 29-yard line. Flutie to B-stick. That's not going to get you downfield in a hurry. And Boston College will have to waste the time, not waste, but take a timeout right here with 31 seconds remaining. Vernon Blackard, the academic all-Southeast Conference left tackle for Auburn, made the stop. I'm impressed with the amount of academic all-Americas on both of these football teams. Very intelligent teams. Tell you, a lot of people out there will say, why did Flutie run that play? That was a screen play all the way. It was designed that way. As we had seen the first two series before this one, Auburn had put a lot of pressure on Flutie. He was expecting pressure, and the screen play is a play you want to call when you're getting a lot of pressure. This year in five of Boston College's eight victories, they either came from being tied or were behind at halftime and then won it in the second half. There's the Auburn scoring drive, eight plays, 81 yards, and that miraculous seven-yard run by Bo Jackson. Not the run, but the way he took the ball in that was tossed behind him. Second down after a loss of a yard, second and 11, Boston College at their own 28-yard line. Flutie airing it out. And it is intercepted by Tim Trinker. That will close the door on Boston College in the first half. Tim Trinkard, who did not have an interception this year, has one now. Here's Flutie back to pass. He's trying to hit a go route here. Throws it down there. Not a bad ball, but watch this interception. Great job by Trinkard. He looks like a wide receiver himself. Here's another angle. Just concentration on the football. If he doesn't make that interception, it's a touchdown for Boston College. Doug Flutie. Thus far, 10 of 21 for 134 yards, being outpassed by Randy Campbell of Auburn. 24 seconds remaining in the half, and Randy Campbell is going to go try to move more. It is intercepted by T.J. Fitzpatrick, the right side linebacker. And you wonder, with Auburn ahead 23 to 10 and just 20 some odd seconds remaining in the half, you'll there are those that will question Randy Campbell throwing the ball. I like the call. He just doesn't see the linebacker. T.J. Fitzpatrick makes a great interception, gets Boston College back in here. Let me tell you something. The way Flutie comes back and throws that football, 13-point lead isn't that much of a lead. So Boston College, with only 16 seconds remaining until halftime, has the football at the 42-yard line of Auburn, and they still have one timeout remaining. So they can get down here and get a score. This is very interesting. No, that was a good call, Howard. Uh, Campbell was trying to get down there and maybe get a field goal before the half. Fitzpatrick did a good job, dropped deep in there, and I don't think Campbell ever saw him. First interception of the game by Boston College, recorded by T.J. Fitzpatrick. 
Up until this point, Randy Campbell has had a sensational first half. Seven of nine for 141 yards. <laughs> not a bad afternoon. I would say not. It's the first time, by the way, in the last four possessions of the ball, Auburn did not score. And so number 22 comes back onto the field, Doug Flutie. He's a good athlete. He has an older brother that plays at Brown. That's a wide receiver. And he has a younger brother, Darren, that's a high school senior at Natick High School. And they say he's the best athlete in the family. <laughs> 16 seconds until halftime from the 42-yard line of Auburn. Flutie has room to run, heading for the sidelines, and goes out of bounds at the 29-yard line with 10 seconds remaining until halftime. A gain on the play of 13 yards and a first down. Pat Dye said that Flutie will just kill you. You think you got him trapped back there and he just runs out of there. And he, uh, as we can see, he's a good runner along with the passer. Flutie ran for 270 yards this year and two touchdowns. Of course, his statistics were passing through the ball 347 times. Completed 47%, 13 touchdowns and had 20 picked off. And when you throw it as much as he does, you have to expect interceptions. Ten seconds until halftime. The ball at the 29. Flutie deep drop. Not by choice. And down to the 31-yard line as time runs out. They mark the ball down at the 33, but that will be the last play. Jeff Jackson chased him down. The right defensive end for Auburn. And before we go to this commercial break, let's go down to Steve Brad. Coach Jack Bicknell, what are you going to tell your team at halftime? I can tell them we've got to, we can't travel the length of the field and not get in the end zone. We're going to have trouble against uh, stopping them. They've got some excellent speed, but we're going to score some points. It's going to be a lot of fun here for this thing's all over with. Okay, Coach, thank you very much. Jack Bicknell, head coach of Boston College, and we'll have halftime activities from the Tangerine Bowl right after these messages. Mike Hogwood with Auburn coach Pat Dye. You threw a lot in the first half. Are you going to continue that here in the second? Well, we, we'll do what we have to do to move the football, and uh, we threw it quite effectively the first half, so I would imagine we'll come back and throw it some second half. You're going to change anything defensively to stop Doug Flutie? Well, He's a tough one. Well, he, you know, we just got to try to do a better job of containing him. He. He's going to complete some passes, we know that, but we've given him some big plays on the passing game, and, and we don't need to do that. Uh, and, of course, everybody knows he's a great quarterback, but we've got to do a better job of containing pressure on him, make him throw the short ones, and, and just come up and tackle. Up 23-10, to 10, you're not going to sit on the lead. I hope not. I, I just, you know, you get in a game like this, you hope to not lose your concentration. Okay, and we'll be back with the kickoff of the second half right after these words. Boston College will kick off as we begin the third quarter. Auburn leading BC by the score of 23 to 10. Kevin Snow kicking it off for the Eagles. Taken by Allen Evans, he dropped it. Now Lionel James will have to pick up. And he gets tagged at the 14 yard line by Chuck Gorecki. So Auburn with poor field position as we begin the third quarter. Statistically, Danny Abramowitz, Boston College, 10 of 22, Doug Flutie for 143 yards, Randy Campbell, 8 of 10 for 146 yards, total offense, 291 Auburn, 217 Boston College. Well, a surprise to me is a time of possession, 1758 for Auburn, 1202 for Boston College. They start this drive on the 15-yard line of Auburn. It is Lionel James. Hit down at the 24-yard line by Dave Pereira, the strong safety. Lionel James impressed me in the first half by the way that he blocked. The second half of tonight's Tangerine Bowl is brought to you by Toyota, who remind you that it's a good feeling to buckle up for safety. By Black & Decker, makers of a complete line of quality precision power tools that can help make a Merry Christmas in any home. By the Bally Corporation, 
a world leader throughout the exciting and diverse amusement industry. And by the Florida Orange Grower. Orange you smart to drink Florida orange juice. Howard David, Danny Abramowitz, Mike Hogwood, and Steve Grant at the 37th Tangerine Bowl. Tony Thurman coming up with a big defensive play to drop Lionel James for a loss of two, and it'll be second and 12, Auburn, at their own 23. The Tigers of Auburn lead it by 13, 23 to 10. Campbell. To Ed West for a first down. George Ratajkowski, the right quarterback, was there to put the hit on Ed West, who had 12 receptions on the year, the junior out of Layton, Alabama. Howard, I think the reason Campbell is having such great success throwing the football is Boston College has not put any pressure on him. This give credit to uh, Auburn's offensive line. They've done a great job of giving him that protection. No question about it. And that is Wallace, Jordan, Reeves, Stokes, and Arrington up front. Campbell going for Woods. And a penalty marker goes down. We may get pass interference on Tony Thurman. The Boston College fans don't agree with it. And neither does Vic Crawford, number five. I think they got their feet tangled together there. It might be a good call. It's going to be awful close. I don't know if Woods would have caught the football anyway, but it's awful close. Let's take a look at it. It's fake down the line, and then he drops back deep. Look at that protection. He's going for the home run to Woods. I hope we can pick it up on the replay. There it is. It's, I don't know about that. It's awful close. What I amounts, don't believe I'd have called it. What amounts to a 27-yard penalty. First down, Auburn at the 36 of Boston College. Edwards to the right and Woods to the left. Campbell to James. Fumble, and I believe Auburn has got it. Tony Thurman was the man that jarred the ball loose for BC, but it is recovered by the Tigers. We'll see who comes up with the ball. I believe it was the fullback, Ron O'Neill. Maybe not, we'll double check. No, it was not, it was Mike Edwards, the split end, who recovered at the 29, so they'll get a seven yard pickup. Tony Thurman really put a hit on Lionel James that time. He can not only cover, he had six interceptions this year, but Tony Thurman can really stick. Tony Thurman may very well be the best athlete in the secondary for BC. Buford and Woods, the wide receivers. Buford right and Woods to the left. Second and five play. Inside to Lionel James, taken down at the 27-yard line by Steve Lubisher. First half statistics revealing in that Auburn threw the ball a lot more than we expected, and Randy Campbell thus far outdistancing Doug Flutie through the air. Look at the balance there, 145 yards rushing, 146 passing. You gotta expect that, the team runs the wishbone, you gotta expect they're gonna pile up a lot of yards on the ground, although less than they normally do at this stage of a ball game. Third and three, from the 28 for Auburn. Campbell has room. Nice through to the 22-yard line. Steve Diossi made the tackle, but not before. Randy Campbell, the junior out of Hartsell, Alabama, made a first down. They mark it at the 22. And a first down as Clayton Buford comes into the game in place of Chris Woods. Steve Diossi, leading tackler on the BC Eagles. Campbell did a great job that time. It made everyone think the fullback had the football, and he just kept it, and he had Boston College fooled all except the Aussie. Auburn, four of six and third down conversions. After that conversion, first and ten play, and Bo Jackson for good yardage inside the 20-yard line. They mark it at the 17, a pickup of five. As Greg Pratt comes into the game, little equipment adjustment going on on the BC sideline to TJ Fitzpatrick, the linebacker. They need him in there too. Peter Holy is in, in place of Fitzpatrick at linebacker. Eight of five and a second and five play coming up. Auburn leads at 23-10 and Campbell looking for Chris Woods. Just overthrew him.
D.J. Fitzpatrick, who transferred from Villanova when Villanova dropped football. And I understand Villanova is looking into the possibility of bringing football back, although maybe not at the 1A level. I hope Xavier thinks about bringing football back, too. <laughs> once, they got, once they let Abramowitz walk, they decided there was nothing more they could do. That shows you how much I did for their program. They don't even have football anymore. The kiss of death, right? Third and five, Auburn, at the 17, Boston College. Up inside, Bo Jackson. Some real tough yards, close to a first down. Vic Crawford, the weak side safety, made the stop of the play, and there's an injured eagle on the deck. Junior Poles, I believe, number 72, and if he, hopefully he's not hurt, but he's an integral part of the Boston College defense. They can ill afford to have him out of the game. Certainly good uh, ill afford to miss this young gentleman. He's going to play in the Senior Bowl this year. He's a great down lineman. Campbell is saying that they're a little short of a first down. And yeah. they are. They mark the ball up to 12. They need to get just to the other side of the 12 for a first down. Bo Jackson thus far on the ball game, 41 yards and 12 carries. As Junior pulls, and that is a truckload as they help him up. 6'4", 281 pounds. <laughs> There's one of the zebras that we did not announce before the ball game. Yeah, he looks like my brother 10 32 Joe. remaining in the third quarter. Auburn leading Boston College 23 to 10. We'll return to the 37th Tangerine Bowl in a moment. Auburn is just shy of a first down. They are going to go for it on fourth down, looking to keep the drive alive. They lead it 23 to 10. Two tight ends. For Auburn, Campbell in the quarterback sneak. I believe he has it. They try to push him back, but his forward progress would tell me that I believe he made it. I think he did, but I, wherever he is in that pileup, I think he did pick uh, his forward progress is going to give him the first down. Interesting statistic to note that Auburn did not punt the football in the first half. And Boston College wished they didn't punt it. They had one punt for 17 yards. But fortunately for BC, that led to an eventual score by Auburn in that first half after that shank punt. Auburn first and 10, just inside the 12-yard line. Buford wide to the right. They remain with two tight ends. Bo Jackson to the six. George Ratajkowski made the tackle on Bo Jackson. It'll bring up second down. We knew that Auburn was going to come into the game and try to grind out a lot of plays and get into double figures with each drive. This particular drive is now 11 plays long. And they're eating the clock up also. There's 9.37 left here in the third period. Second down and four for Auburn. Campbell broken up. Excellent defensive play by Tony Thurman. He is the big play man in the secondary for Boston College, and he came up big there to knock the pass intended for Mike Woods down. I tell you what, Howard, if you had intercepted that pass, you can look here. Campbell drops back. This is a very dangerous pass, especially down on your goal line like this. It's just an out move. Campbell probably audible at the line of scrimmage. Comes straight, quick pass, and out. Watch Thurman cut in front of the receiver. Good job. When the receiver can't catch the ball, don't let the defensive guy get it. So Mike Edwards did a good job there. Vic Crawford, the safety for BC, third down and four. Campbell to Lionel James. And an excellent defensive play by Tony Thurman. A loss of a yard on the play as Tony Thurman comes up big on the third down play, and it'll bring on the field goal unit for Auburn. I think if I was Auburn, I'd stay away from Tony Thurman. I'd go to the other side. He's a tough character. This will be a 28-yard field goal by Al Del Greco. He is 10 of 10 between 20 and 29 yards. Mike Mann to hold. Plenty of distance, and it is good. And Auburn is up the count to 26 to 10. Al Del Greco gives Auburn a 16-point lead with 8.44 to play in the third quarter. We'll be back 
with more after these messages from your local station. Dave Blanks with the kickoff. Taken by Ken Bell. Across the 20-yard line. Down in the deep back pile, Johnny Cheeks coming up with the tackle. I want to acknowledge a couple of people that were elected to or inducted to the Tangerine Ball Hall of Fame. Dick Crum, the North Carolina head coach. Rob Carpenter, Buster O'Brien, and Jack Lambert, who all played in this Tangerine Bowl. And Will Geiger, a good friend that has been on the T-Bowl committee since 1972, all inducted into the Tangerine Ball Hall of Fame. BC at their own 23-yard line. As Doug Flutie and company tries to cut the distance down. Stratford to the 28, taken down by the strong safety Bob Harris. I think that's good to come out running the football. Auburn has come out here with the five defensive back linemen, four down linemen. So you've got to establish a, some sort of a running game early to force them into uh, a run defense where you can throw the football. Pick up a six on the play, second and four Boston College at their own 29-yard line. Twin receivers to the right side. Keep in mind that Scott Nislick has only caught one pass today. Stratford looking for room, gets a yard. Cut down by Greg Carr and Jeff Jackson. Stratford in the first half had 40 yards rushing and only eight carries. He has carried the ball twice consecutively here on this drive. It'll bring up a third and about two. One setback and two tight ends in the game for Boston College. The connection to John Shane. For the 42, David King, the left quarterback, makes the stop on John Shane with help from Greg Carr, but not before the Eagles have come up with a first down. That was a good, simple pattern. Just a delay back across the middle, and Shane was wide open, picking him apart. First down, BC. Shane comes to the left side. Brennan to the right as they move Nislick to the left side of the formation, out of the eye. Play fake by Flutie. Flutie to the 40. Greg Carr makes the tackle, and let's go to Steve Grad. All right, I'm here in the zone E section, and this is a tradition at the Tangerine Bowl in the end zone with the zonies. Here's the king of the zonies. Show us your zonies cheer, Gene. All right. thing that's marvelous about bowl games, about football in general, is the crowd getting so heavily involved, and there are 50,000 plus in attendance tonight as Gerald Phelan goes in motion. Second and nine play for BC. Stratford on the sweep. 45 to the 50 into the 49 before Doug Smith, the left tackle for Auburn, made the stop on the play. Not before, Troy Stratford comes up with the first down. They mark it at the 50. That was a great call. They came up in a passing formation and a passing down. They had an eye formation. Just a quick pitch. They caught Auburn off guard and just good running here by Stratford. He knows where that first down market dies for for the first down for Boston College. First down for the Eagles at midfield. down. Ball was fumbled and it is recovered by Auburn. Greg Carr comes up with a loose ball. All Southeast Conference an academic All Southeast Conference. Greg Carr comes up with a loose ball on this turnover. Here it is. A drop back pass. He's looking for Brendan over the middle. Puts the ball right on the money. But the only problem is you got to hold on to that football. It looked like the ball was just stripped right from his hands. And there he is, Carr stripped it from him. 5.38 to play, third quarter. Auburn leading Boston College by the score of 26 to 10, and we'll return in a moment. 
Auburn with the ball at their own 32-yard line. First and 10 after the turnover. Auburn has recorded four now. Ball was tipped and almost caught anyway by the intended receiver, Jeff Parks. Now let's go to Mike Hogwood. We're with Greg Carr, made the fumble recovery. Greg, the quickest way to stop a team that's driving is to cause a turnover. That's right, and it seems like tonight we're having a hard time stopping Boston College. They have a real explosive offense, and we're just going to do the best job we can to stay on our toes throughout the game. Great job getting that fumble. Thank you very Greg much. Greg Carr, linebacker Auburn. Edwards goes wide to the left, and Chris Woods wide to the right. Auburn in that wishbone, second and ten from their own 32-yard line. Lionel James. The three yards before Steve Diossi and Junior Poles, who's back in the ball game after sitting out a few plays with an injury, made the stop on Lionel James. He came into the game with a nickname of Little Train, and the way he's blocking tonight, I have to call him Big Train. Big Train and the caboose along with it. Junior Poles did a good job that time, but Lionel James is a very difficult person to tackle in the open field, and Poles did a good job there. Jack Bicknell, the head coach of Boston College. His team is down 26-10 with 4.58 to play third quarter. Third and seven. Campbell under a Russian sack for the first time. Back at the 25 by T.J. Fitzpatrick. So Randy Campbell will watch his team punt for the first time. Watch this, it's a blitz right up the middle. Fitzpatrick, the linebacker, comes right up there untouched. Campbell tries to get away from him, but a big sack for Boston College. First time that Lewis Colbert will come out of the field for Auburn. As he'll punt it away. That's the way a dandy. Fair catch called for at the 37-yard line by Gerald Phelan. Phelan has a brother that plays football at Delaware, and of course Delaware has a great 1AA football team under head coach Tubby Raymond. 39-yard punt by Lewis Colbert, and BC in business now at their own 37-yard line. Their second best field position they've had at the beginning of a drive tonight. And Boston College almost had a block punt right there. 4-11 remaining third quarter with a timeout. The score, Auburn 26, and Boston College 10. That's part of this crowd of 52,000 here at the Tangerine Bowl for game number 37 and one of the older bowls on the NCAA's ledger. Doug Flutie has some room, throws it on the run, and tags. On the play was Scott Nislick, the intended receiver. He took a vicious shot. Here's Flutie sprinting out. He lays the ball up for Nislick off his hands, but you got to pay for it. He really gets unloaded by Collier there. Dennis Collier is the hardest hitter in the Auburn secondary, and there he gave us a perfect example of why. You know, I always felt hard. If I'm going to take those kind of shots, I'm going to hold on to the football. <laughs> well, I think one of the things that's happening right now is that Doug Flutie's the ball is being thrown pretty high and therefore his receivers are fair game out there, oh, and that's yeah. dangerous. He was left uh, exposed right there, and that rib cage opened up. You know, a lot of times you get those little alligator arms, you don't want to look up, that, uh, reach up that high, especially with a hitter like Collier on you. Scott Nislick is going to the blue-gray game, came to Boston College as a wide receiver, converted to tight end, East Coast Athletic Conference All-Star this year. Here's Doug Flutie, also an ECAC All-Star, second and ten. Boston College at their own 37. Shrigley in motion. Flutie has it intercepted and dropped. Mark Dormady had the clear sailing for an interception. The pass intended for Rich Shrigley again. The ball thrown too high. Way high. You can see it here. It's straight drop back pass. Plenty of protection. Flutie is looking for Shrigley on an out move. Way over his head. Almost an interception back there. Hit the ground. Oh, yeah. Looked like he had it momentarily, but he trapped it underneath. Right. So it'll bring up a third and ten for BC from their own 37-yard line with 3.58 remaining third quarter and a 26-10 Auburn lead. John Shane and Paul Zedanek, rather Gerald Phelan, out wide to the left as Flutie is set back at the 31-yard line. 
by James Wallace and Quincy Williams, who combined. Now let's go to Steve Grad. Another famous former, another former Boston College player who's made it big, Governor Ed King of Massachusetts. And sir, what about PC now? Well, the scoreboard doesn't look as well as we'd like to see it, but really and truly, it is a fine football game. I believe Auburn's offense, especially their ground attack, has been very difficult for BC to contain. We don't have any statistics, uh, numbers, but it certainly looks to me as though their running attack has been working very, very well. Thank you, Governor King, a former NFL player, I might add. Scott Nislick, a 38-yard punt, and a one-yard return is all for Lionel James. So Auburn will put it in play, first and 10 at their own 31. 3-19 remaining, third quarter, and Auburn nursing a 26-10 lead. They have dominated this game for head coach Pat Dye. Next year's schedule for both these teams are <laughs> incredible, and I'll get to it in a moment. Edwards wide to the right. Campbell on the option. Campbell to the 40. Campbell to the 45. Steve Lubisher made the tackle on Randy Campbell with help from Junior Poles. And right now, that age-old expression that the defense has been out there too long is starting to take its toll. I think the BC players are going to need BC tablets tonight. When they see enough of Campbell, they're going to see Campbell in their dreams. He's just been awesome. That time, he just kept the football. Uh, when they get on him tight, he pitches it. He's just a tough character to corral. 14-yard pickup and a first down. At the 45 of Auburn. Campbell going upstairs. And Chris Woods hauling it in at the 37-yard line. Right in front of George Ratajkowski. Guys are going to definitely have to put pressure on. Look at this. It's fake into the fullback. Option drop back. All the time in the world to throw it. One-on-one -on -one coverage out here. Right on the money. Just a completion. Pitch and guess. A catch to Chris Woods. A pickup of 17 yards by Chris Woods. His third reception for 67 yards. First down, Auburn, 38, Boston College. Bo Jackson to the 20 and inside of the 19. Taken off his feet by George Ratajkowski. So helping on the play was Carl Pelagata. Watch Cam, we were just awesome. Pitches it right away. He saw pressure pitching to the outside. Great block blocking. Bo Jackson just runs over a couple defenders and another Auburn first down. That offense is just awesome of Auburn. Blocking has been superb. 19 yards on the pickup for that man, Bo Jackson. And a first down Auburn. This drive started at their own 31. They have it at BC's 19. Up inside of the fullback, Greg Pratt. Diasi, Fitzpatrick combining for the stop as they mark it at the 15-yard line. It's really got to be frustrating for Boston College. They, they stop the outside stuff, they go to the fullback. They stop the fullback, they go to the passing. They stop the passing, they go to Bo Jackson to the outside. Second down and six for Auburn. Great fake in there, great blocking by the Auburn line, and Pratt just takes it right through. I think he surprised the secondary. He just goes in untouched. I think they were completely uh, surprised. Vic Crawford uh, didn't even see Pratt coming up through there. 32-10, Auburn. Del Greco out of the hold of Mike Mann. With the extra point, that ups the count to 33-10. We have a minute and ten to play in the third quarter. And I was talking before I started to about the schedules of these two teams as they prepare for next year. Auburn has Texas, Florida State, Florida, Maryland, Tennessee, and Alabama on their schedule next year. All have one thing in common. They're all in a bowl game this year. Boston College 
has Clemson, West Virginia, Alabama, and Penn State on their schedule next year, and they're all in bowl games. <laughs> so Boston College is, and Auburn's going to enjoy themselves tonight, worry about the season next year. Exactly. 33-10 Auburn. That drives 69 yards in five plays. The big plays, a 17-yard pass to Chris Woods, a 19-yard run by Bo Jackson, and a 15-yard touchdown run, culminating the drive by Greg Pratt, the sophomore from Albany, Georgia, who coming into this ball game rushed for all of 106 yards all season. It just shows you the depth of Auburn's backfield. David Blacks will kick off for Auburn. To Howie Brown or Ken Bell. The one yard line, Howie Brown. Oh my goodness. Steve Lobisher, number 93, put a mean hit. That help from Quincy Williams. Correction, that is Quincy Williams. Steve Lobisher is with BC. Quincy Williams made the tackle and it was vicious. Boy, it really was. I think both of them down, getting up slow. Brown's running off the field. Quincy Williams is being helped off the field. Here's the return right here. Here's Brown heading up in there. Watch his hit. Whammo. That's when you're glad you're up in the broadcasting booth and not down on the field. I gotta give credit to Brown and getting up from that kind of hit. You know he can take a punch. Meanwhile, there is an injured Auburn player. Yeah, and it's Quincy Williams. Quincy Williams who made the tackle. Here it is again. Watch his hit. Here comes Brown up, right on the right of your screen. Watch that hit. And it's amazing he held on to the football. Shane and Zidanek, wide to the right. Stratford gets the call to the 26-yard line. Tim Drinkard and Bob Harris combining for Auburn. Howard BC has to get down and score here. They're behind 33 to 10 with 44 seconds remaining in the third period. They got to get some points on the scoreboard to get back in this game. Tracy Turner for Boston College on the sidelines, being tended to by the trainer. Second and five from the 26 yard line of BC. Failing in motion. And the connection to Scott Nislick for only the second time to the 31 yard line. Now let's go to Mike or to Mike Hogwood with Greg Frank. Well, Howard, as you know, the fullback position in the wishbone offense usually means that you're a blocker, but every now and then there's a moment of glory and it came for Greg Pratt tonight. Right, you know, it was just good blocking on the inside and good flaking by the other backs and a good read by the quarterback who was wide open. I just took it to the end zone. You feel you have this game under control now? Well, I don't think so because BC has a good pass again and I feel like they can come back any time. I feel like if we get three more touchdowns, then we can feel confident and say we won the game. Auburn's <laughs> Greg Pratt. From the 31-yard line, three more touchdowns. That's a nice order. That's a nice Stratford gets the call and decked immediately. The combine of Dow Altman and Gerald Williams making sure that Stratford paid for it. They dropped him for a loss back to the 28-yard line. Well, they read that awful fast. Stratford had nowhere to run with the football. That is the end of the third quarter with Auburn on top of the score of 30. Boston College has their work cut out for them in the final 15 minutes. That story is yet to unfold. Boston College now second and 13 for their own 28-yard line. The reverse to Brennan. Has blocking. Brennan to the 40 and out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Doug Flutie made a big block to spring Brennan down the sidelines. He certainly did, too. That was a good trick play there in reverse, and it caught Auburn off guard. They mark it at the 44-yard line, a pickup of 16 on the play. Danny, after three quarters, Doug Flutie, 13 of 27 for 178 yards. Not what you would consider to be on schedule. No, indeed not. He had 10 of 22 at halftime. 16 first downs, Auburn, 15 Boston College. The Eagles have it first and 10 at their own 44-yard line. 
Phelan out wide to the right. The draw to Ken Bell. Maybe he got a yard. Vernon Blacker was the man that made the hit. And Jimmy Warren for Auburn. That's really a tribute to Auburn. As much as Boston College throws the football when they run the ball, Auburn's been there to stop it. Second and nine, BC from their own 45-yard line. Out of the eye. Flutie sacked at the 40. They didn't disguise it good enough because John Daly and Jared Williams were there, particularly Jared Williams, number 98. He was trying to misdirection play that time. Flutie faked to his backs going to the left. He came back to the right, but Auburn was there with two defenders of sacking. A loss of five, third and 14 BC from their own 40 yard line. They're out of a pro set. Against the three man rush. Flutie with time finds Phelan and oh, Doctor, was he blasted at the 45 by Chris Martin. What was that ever a hit? Here's Flutie with a straight drop back. Great protection by the Boston College offensive line. Coming over the middle. He catches the football, but was he ever nailed? Phelan is really jarred right there, but he picks up the first down and holds on to the football. Great catch, great concentration. Chris Martin, all Southeast Conference, made a big hit, but not before BC has recorded a first down. They have twin receivers to the left. One setback. A four-man rush this time. Flutie has a lot of room to run. East of the 40. 35 and down there close to another first down. Bob Harris got to him first. You know, Howard, amazing stat. Boston College in the fourth period outscored their opponents 100 to 34. And looks like they're moving the football right now. They got to time is of the essence. It's 12-48. They trail 33 to 10. They may need about half of that. Yeah, they have that hundred. Yeah, the way Auburn's moving the football. Auburn with a 23-point lead. The measurement is down, and it is close to a first down. Looks like you could probably stick a credit card in there to determine if you made it. Very close. By the nose of the football. We'll call it short. No! The referee says, no way! Says, you may call it short, but I've got the striped shirt, and I call it first down. You know... It's a tribute to Boston College, uh, the character of this football team. Most teams would be packing their bags right now with a 33 to 10 lead by Auburn. But Boston College is on the move right now. First down, BC at the 35 of Auburn. Auburn leads 33 to 10. We have 12:34 to play in the fourth quarter. Palin out wide to the right side. Flutie under a rush, gets some time and hits Palin at the 14-yard line. David King got to him, but Gerald Phelan, the sophomore out of Rosemont, or Rosemont, Pennsylvania, made a big reception. Watch Flutie here. I think he has radar on his helmet. He's back here. He's under a lot of pressure. Comes out, looks for Phelan coming across the middle, releases the football. Watch this catch. Great concentration. He gets hit by two or three Auburn players, but not before he picks up a first down. Doug Flutie has just broken the all-time BC passing record held by Red Harris of BC as Stratford gets the call down to the 10 yard line. Less than 12 minutes remaining in the ball game and Auburn ahead by 23. Ball at the 10 yard line of Auburn. It'll be second down Boston College. Stratford's leaving the game and he's carried the ball very well tonight. Stratford goes to the sidelines and there's a penalty marker thrown by the back judge. Bill Lovett out of the ACC threw the flag in the Auburn secondary. I think Auburn has 12 men on the field, if I'm not mistaken. Look at that guy's running in and out all over the place. Yeah, I believe you're right, Danny. 12 men on the field. Nice call, coach. 
And you're not even wired. They still don't know. I think they got 10 guys now. Now they have 11 men on the field. And they'll march off five yards against Auburn. Jack Bicknell, the head coach at Boston College, has taken BC to their first bowl game since the 1943 Orange Bowl. It is now second down and a yard for BC from the five of Auburn. Phelan in motion. Up inside, first down, Boston College. Inside the five. You know, that time, Auburn had ten men on the field. <laughs> that was Bob Beestick that got the first down. They still got ten men on the field. Howard, here comes the 11th man finally running into the game. So they had 12 one play and 10 this time. Well, we, I don't know, we can count it here. If you can count real fast, you can see that there were 12 men on the field. First and goal, BC at the two yard line with a full house backfield. Flutie bootleg as the penalty marker flies. Flutie into the end zone and it is caught by Nyflick, but hold on. There is a penalty marker. Johnny Keeks was the defender, but there is a marker on the play. They may bring this one back. No, it is offsides. Auburn, the touchdown will hold up. Here comes Boston College. Here's Flutie faking the bootleg here. If the referee will get out of the way. He's in trouble. He's looking for, for Nislik in, in the end zone with his strong arm. Under pressure, fires it right in there on the money. And a great catch. Scott Nislik had three touchdown receptions this year. He chalks up number four. Thus far, he has been relatively invisible. That time, he was very helpful to get Flutie out of a jam because the bootleg did not fake Auburn at all. He was yelling for Flutie to throw it to him, but uh, Flutie was running for his life. 10.55 remaining in the football game. Auburn's lead has now been cut to 33-16. to And we'll take a break right here as there's time out on the field with the score. Auburn leading Boston College by the score of... Auburn called timeout because Boston College was going to line up for a two-point conversion. The Eagles went for it on the two-point conversion. Doug Flutie to Scott Nislick in the end zone. The two-point conversion is good, and Auburn now has found their lead cut to 15, 33 to 18 with 10:55 to play in the fourth quarter. A drive that went 80 yards in 12 plays. BC had the ball for four minutes and 48 seconds. A three-yard touchdown pass to Scott Nislick. I like that, going for two-point conversion. That's great. Well, it puts them 15 down. It'll take two more of those touchdowns and two more two-point conversions to give BC the ball game, but Auburn may have something to say about that. They control the ball very well, and thus far they have pretty much dominated the game except for that last drive. Well, Auburn has their hands team in there now. This is the prevent defense on the onside kickoff to prevent the onside kickoff. See if Boston College will do that. And you notice, huh? you notice a lot of the Auburn people on the line are either receivers or backs. Call that the hands team. They kick it long to Chris Woods. Rather, Clayton Buford on the return. Buford has side and he is down at the 27 yard line. Making the tackle on the play for Boston College was George Radichowski. Now let's go to Steve Grad. Scott Nislick, you made a great touchdown. How'd you get loose? Uh, it was just a basic misdirection play where the, uh, it worked all year for us and uh, all the flow goes one way, I go the other way and there it was in the end zone. Can you, can you get your momentum back? Yeah, oh yeah. You know, I was down a little in the first half, so it was the team a little bit, but we feel we're coming back. I just want to say hello, Pops, hello, Dick, how you doing? Scott Geislick. <laughs> Lionel James with a block. To the 39-yard line. Taken down by Tony Thurman. And Russ Joyner, Joyner made the, the key hit to bring him down at the 39 and close to a first down. It's amazing, Howard. They're not only fooling Boston College now, they're fooling the broadcasters. I thought the fullback had the ball. Campbell just does a great job of faking into the line and pitching the football. 
There's the scoring drive for Boston College. A three-yard TD pass to Flutie to Scott Nislick. Willie Howell is in at a running back for Auburn. Wearing number 20. About a foot for a first down for Auburn. Boston College has just been unable to stop this awesome Auburn offense. This might cons be considered to be a gambling down for Auburn. Second down in a yard. They may fake it inside and go up top. No, nope, Campbell. Making me understand how little I know about this game. <laughs> They're going to control that football. The clock is on their side, so Auburn's just going to grind that football out. Pick up a three to the 42-yard line, and Auburn now first and ten at their own 42 as Willie Howell comes out of the game with 10-17 to play. Boston College has not faced a wishbone since 1980. Most of these players that are on the field tonight for BC were not on that 1980 Boston College team. Jack Picknell was not the head coach in 1980 either. Campbell throws it away. That's intended for Tommy Carroll, number 84. Shows you one thing, Auburn's done sitting on that lead. He came out firing away at that time. He wisely threw the football away because he was covered very well over there. If you have just tuned in, Auburn has controlled this football game pretty much since Boston College went out in front 7 to nothing. Since then, it has been all Auburn. They now lead it 33 to 18. And Randy Campbell has had a whale of a tangerine ball. Buford out wide to the left. Bo Jackson to the 45. T.J. Fitzpatrick, the right side linebacker, got to him, along with Doug Geyer. Doug Geyer, number nine, is 6'5", 211. He was a quarterback for Boston College a year ago. One of the three quarterbacks that Doug Flutie unseated because of a combination of things, injuries, and the fact that Flutie is just a great football player. You're talking about a well-rounded athlete. Doug Geyer moving from quarterback to defensive end. That's a tough adjustment. Three yards of the pickup, third and seven for Auburn. BC showing a blitz. Campbell on the pitch to Lionel James. Close to a first down at the 48-yard line. Russ Joyner, the co-captain for BC, made the stop. This lady from Auburn has to be happy about the way things are going right now. Very close to a first down. At the conclusion of this game, obviously, we will pick a most valuable player. Mattel Electronics, the makers of Intellivision, will present the most valuable player award as well as a $1,000 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of the winning school or the MVP winner. Chris Woods comes out of the game and Tommy Carroll comes into the play from the sideline on fourth down in the yard. It's a man shows you the Pat Dye's confidence in their, his offense. Campbell on the sneak. I think he might have it, but hold on. We'll wait. If he does, it's awful close. He had to get to the 48-yard line. Now we'll see where they put the football down. Boy, it is awful close. It really is. That's a heck of a gamble right there. Boston College held. hung in there with Boston College. Just a great tribute to that, uh, that ball team. So Auburn gambled and lost. And Boston College comes up with the best field position they have had tonight. On their own 49-yard line. With a break in the action. 8.45 remaining fourth quarter. Auburn leading Boston College 33-18. to We'll be back after these words from the local station. So Boston College trailing 33 to 18 gets a big break because the defense made it happen. They set it up at their own 49. Twin receivers to the right. And Flutie back to throw. Almost intercepted by Mark Dormany, number 46. He has already picked off one tonight, and he was looking for the second. Second down, Boston College at the 49. Flutie had to throw that ball sooner than he wanted to. Great pressure on him, and Dormany almost came up with another big interception. Doug Flutie, 16 of 31 for 216 yards. And he has been picked off twice.
with a rush on. Moody fights the dirt. The blitz by Jeff Jackson, the right defensive end, number 42. BC very active. Rather, Auburn very active, and it pays off in big dividends. What Jackson comes to the lower part of your screen, just runs over the blocking back there, right over top of Flutie. That's a bad feeling right there when the walls of Jericho come tumbling down. He had Jackson and Ben Thomas. Christopher, Christopher was supposed to pick him up that time. Third and 22, Boston College. From their own 37. Deep drop by Flutie. Stratford out of the backfield, looking for room. He's going to come up short by a wide margin, gets to the 44-yard line. He picked up seven on the play. They still need 15. I got to punt the football away. Flutie was looking for a receiver deep downfield. Brennan was trying to run a corner route, but Flutie just not, did not have time. Auburn's been putting some pretty good pressure on him now. Nyslick in to punt. Flutie's been sacked three times tonight. A high kick, he kicks it away from Lionel James, takes a Boston College roll inside the 10-yard line and stops at the eight. Excellent kick by Scott Nyslick of 47 yards. No return. With 7-11 remaining in the fourth quarter, Auburn leading it by 15, 33 to 18, and Auburn on offense deep in their own territory. Coach Pat Dye for the Auburn Tigers, his team in front by 15, and they have the ball deep in their own territory at the eight-yard line. Bo Jackson for no gain. Doug Geyer got to him first. While Rutgers and Princeton started all of college football back in 1869, Auburn was the first team to play one of the obviously one of the two first teams to play a football game in the deep south back in 1892 so they've been around a while huh? <laughs> tommy carroll came in from play from the sideline jack picknell said at the luncheon yesterday he said we've seen enough of mickey mouse this week it's time to stop playing some football he's seen enough of randy campbell tonight hop inside to ron o'neill and not much there so that'll bring up a third down play for Auburn and third and long at that. You know, Howard, everyone knew coming into the football game that Lionel James and Bo Jackson were great backs, but I've been impressed tonight by Ron O'Neill and Greg Pratt, the fullbacks for Auburn. Auburn is four of nine in third down conversions. Come on, Russell, let's go, buddy! Scott Nislick cheering on the Boston College defense. Third down and about nine for a first down. The pitch to Lionel James. First down to the 20. Russ Joyner, the defensive end for Boston College with help from Vic Crawford made the tackle. And a big play by Lionel James. That really is a big play. Great job by Campbell and Lionel James. Third and nine and pick it up when you had to pick it up. Auburn dodges the bullet, and they get it at their own 20-yard line now. First and 10, with 5.44 remaining in the ballgame. And Auburn leading at 33-18 to 18 as Tommy Carroll comes to the near side. The pitch to Bo Jackson. Trying to turn the corner, and Boston College denies him. Although he picks up four yards before T.J. Fitzpatrick, number 28, and Vic Crawford combining. Bringing Jackson and James down, it takes two Boston College tacklers. They're just hard runners. That time he broke through one tackle and Fitzpatrick came and put the finishing blow on him. Bo Jackson, only a freshman. Three more years for the Auburn opposing teams to look at him. Jackson, 73 yards and 17 carries. Lionel James, 86 yards and 18 carries. Pratt, the fullback, out to the 35. Crawford and Ratajkowski making the stop, but not before Auburn has chalked up another first down. You know, Howard, Lionel James and Bo Jackson will attest to this fact. In order to run like they've been running, Wallace, Jordan, 
Reeves, Stokes, and Arrington. That's the offensive line of Auburn. They've just done a fantastic job tonight. No question about it. 4.40 to go. In the 37th and certainly most successful Tangerine Bowl. James. In the open field. Inside Boston College territory before Tony Thurman wrestled him down. Tommy Carroll with a nice block, number 84. You will see it. Just a quick pitch to Lionel James. Great blocking out in front, but watch his speed to the outside. Just jitterbugging, faking extra yardage. He knows where the first down marker, and he's corralled down. Not before he picks up a big first down. 17 yards on the run by Lionel James, as James has gone over 100 yards, 103 yards rushing in 19 carries. Tommy Carroll comes out wide to the near side with four minutes to go. Bo Jackson to the 46. Steve Diasio, the left side linebacker, got to him. And so did Peter Holy. Auburn just keeps hammering at you. Wholesale substitutions coming in now for Auburn. Randy Campbell comes to the near side out of the ball game, number 14, along with Bo Jackson. As Mike Mann, a sophomore quarterback from Marietta, Georgia, comes in to guide the Tigers the rest of the way, the last 325. The pitch to Collis Campbell, who comes into the game at running back, a freshman out of Florence, Alabama. Where do all these good freshman football players come from? And he's uh, not a midget. He's 6'1", 214 pounds, a freshman. And now wholesale changes by that man, Pat Dye, as he wants to get more players into their first bowl game in their career. And the way Dye recruits, you have to believe that there's going to be more bowl games in Auburn's future. This is Alan Evans, taken off his feet by Dave Pereira. Boston College not making an effort to stop the clock. They realize that Auburn is very tough to stop. Now they take a timeout with 2.37 to play in the ball game. Auburn has ground out 252 rushing yards thus far. Randy Campbell is 10 of 16 for 176 yards as he left the ball game. There's your score. With 2.37 to play in the game, will return. In Lewis Colbert, who was born with a club foot, had four operations before he was four years old on his kicking foot. We watched him in practice before the game, and he can boom him. He certainly can. He's only been kicking, only kicked one time tonight. He gets the second one away. Phelan, fair catch at the 15-yard line. Phelan wants a marker to be thrown, and I believe there was one thrown. <laughs> That's how you get someone hurt there. I did not catch the number of the Auburn player. I believe he he might have brushed by Phelan. Now we'll get a look at him. Here it is. It's a fair catch. Phelan's calling for a fair catch. And the Auburn player almost decapitates him. I believe it was Tim Trinker for Auburn that committed the foul. They move it out to the 30-yard line. And Boston College with what may be their last opportunity to put points on the board. They trail 33-18 to with 2.29 to play. Flutie's a miracle worker, and I'm not sure he can pull off this miracle, but we'll wait and see. Down the middle, and it's underthrown. Intended for Brian Bennett. Brian Brennan stops the clock with 2.24. Some happy Auburn Tiger cheerleaders. Scott Nislick goes out of the ball game. And so does John Shane. Doug Flutie broke the all-time career passing record for Boston College. We made a mention of that earlier with 4,575 yards up to now. And he is only a sophomore. Flutie again with plenty of time. Out of the backfield or out of the side comes Palin to the 37-yard line. Tackle by Greg Carr. They'll give him the short stuff. Right, they're going to give him the short stuff. Auburn was playing deep. On the BC receivers that time, they just had plenty of time, and so they just dumped the ball over the middle. 
Flutie telling the players that were coming into the game to go back off and going without a huddle as the clock winds down, less than two minutes to play. Flutie. Out of bounds, stopping the clock across the 40-yard line, chased out by Greg Carr and Dennis Collier. That play uh, looked like a scrabble board that time. He was sprinting out to his left. He couldn't find a receiver, and Wazi just ran and picked up the first down and got out of bounds also to stop the clock. Doug Flutie was chosen the ECAC Player of the Year, the East Coast Athletic Conference Player of the Year for his performance. Sophomore out of Natick, Massachusetts. First and 10, BC at their own 41 with a minute and 50 to play. four-man rush and Flutie now running with a football to the 49-yard line. Bob Harris made sure he'd go no further. The clock continues to move. And I believe Boston College is going to go without a huddle at the 49-yard line. They're in their two-minute offense. Just lining up audible at the line of scrimmage. Flutie looking for Brennan and he's got him. Brennan fumbles the football, he threw it back, and it is recovered by Auburn at the 35, by David King. Brian Brennan has to be a very upset young man. He had a first down to the 30, and he threw it back, looking for maybe somebody to help him out. Here's Flutie, all the time in the world, finds Brennan over the middle. Here comes Collier in there again. They just stripped the ball from Brennan that time. There it is, laying on the carpet. An Auburn op opportunistic team just bounces on the football, and that should put the final nail in the coffin. Most valuable player of the 37th Tangerine Ball is with Mike Hogwood. Okay, and as you said, he's the MVP. Randy Campbell, congratulations. This has to be one of the happiest nights of your entire career. Yeah, it is. This, this has got to be the happiest night. Uh, you know, the Alabama game had to be right up with it, but this is fantastic. Uh, I've had more fun playing tonight than I've ever had in my whole life playing football. You threw the ball with success tonight. Uh, are you doing anything different? Not really. We, we had planned to throw the ball, and we worked real hard uh, the week and a half we had to prepare for the game, and we've got an excellent core of receivers. Offensive line's done an outstanding job, and we just finally put our passing game together tonight. Randy Campbell, congratulations Thank you. to you. Randy Campbell, 10 of 16, throwing the football tonight for 176 yards. I think that's his highest total yardage for the year. That is best day, no doubt about it. New quarterback in the game for Auburn as Pat Dye wants to get a namesake into the game, Pat Washington. Also, Kyle Campbell is in the game at running back. First down, Auburn at the 49 of BC with a minute and nine to play. Ball is fumbled, but picked up immediately by Washington. Now, you know, amazing thing, Campbell played an error-free football game. He threw that one interception right before the half, but that was a meaningless interception. Uh, they led the country this year in the fewest turnovers, only 14, and one of the intricate offenses Auburn has. It's just utterly amazing uh, that Auburn can have that kind of success. Here are the gentlemen that made tonight's telecast possible. Tip of the hat to Roger Schwing, our director, Victor Piano, our producer, for putting on a whale of a telecast tonight, and all the people that... I, I'd really not rather mention names now because I'd miss somebody, and there's so many people to thank for doing a great job up here uh, and down in the truck, obviously. My I thanks. One at Mislu. And my thanks also to Dick Tarpey from Boston College, who has been keeping our statistics tonight, and Mark Fackelman, our spotter from Auburn University. Our thanks to those two gentlemen. 51 seconds remaining in the ball game. Auburn will win the 1982 Tangerine Ball. An auspicious occasion for Pat Dye's team. They haven't been to a bowl since 74. For Boston College, it has been longer, but I believe they'll be back in a bowl game. Loose ball, and Boston College has recovered into the 50-yard line with 46 seconds to go. Dave Pereira comes up with a loose ball. It's only the second turnover for Auburn tonight. Auburn, a relatively... A uh, team that was relatively free of turnovers all year. As a matter of fact, they led the nation. That's exactly right. And I think both of these teams can go home with their heads hung high. Uh, Auburn, who just played a great football game, and Boston College has nothing to be ashamed of because uh, they were beaten tonight by a great football team. Memorable night for Pat Dye and his staff. Had an All-American in 1960. Was co-captain with uh, Fran Tarkington in Georgia when he was there.
We have 46 seconds remaining in the ball game. Auburn leading Boston College by 15. 46 seconds remaining, 46 seconds more for Pat Dye and his staff to enjoy, and they will after the game is over as well. The BC come up against the buzzsaw tonight. Doug Flutie got Brennan at the 40 and crept down at the 39-yard line by Ronnie Ballou and Greg Carr. Clark stops on the first down, and BC going without a huddle. I think Brennan's going to get up awful slow tomorrow morning. He's taking some awful shots across that middle, but he's held on to the football. He just fumbled a couple times, but he held on in that traffic. Over the middle, the pass reception to Phelan inside the 15 to the 13. Dennis Collier got him there with 27 seconds remaining. And again, BC going without a huddle. Try to make it respectable, and Boston College calls for timeout. While we have the opportunity, my thanks sincerely to Mike Hogwood and Steve Brad, who have performed the task in a difficult one it is in patrolling the sidelines and getting us some great interviews and some insight as to what has been happening on the sidelines. Our thanks to those two gentlemen, to David Housel, the Sports Information Director at Auburn, and Reed Oslin, the SID at Boston College, for their tremendous support all week in preparing us for this telecast tonight. They really sent us a lot of information. Here's Flutie dropping back, uh, great rock back, uh, drop back pass, plenty of protection. Boston College is giving him protection all night. Finds Phelan coming over the middle. Good concentration. And he's going to pay for it, though, right here. The Boston College never gives up. They're still hanging in there. Dennis Collier hits like a wild game track. Wow. He's brutal. Very good football player, a senior out of Sheffield, Alabama. I think we might be reading about him in the NFL one of these days. Could very well be, as well as a few other players that are out on this field tonight. Jack Belcher, the center from Boston College, a great one. Flutie is going to be dropped at the 16-yard line by Ben Thomas. That is the fourth quarterback sack registered by Auburn tonight. The clock winds down, and Flutie trying to get his team up to the line of scrimmage for a final play. Nine, eight seconds remaining. He will get this play off. It could be the last play of the game. Flutie looking. Still looking. Looking to go into the end zone. Throws it into the end zone. Touchdown to Brian Brennan. As the clock registers triple zero, but that touchdown will count. And Pat Dye feeling good about the victory, maybe not so good about Boston College scoring on the game's final play, and I'm not so sure that after Brian Brennan made that reception, which by the way was his seventh reception for 150 yards, I'm not sure they'll allow him to go for the two-point conversion, I believe this ball game is over, Flutie completes 22 of 38 for 304 yards and two touchdowns, I believe this ball game is now complete. I don't know how they're going to get all those people off the field. It's filled with people. Well, Boston College has not left the sidelines. Some Auburn players have left. And we'll take a look at the touchdown. Here it is. Just a magic man. He, he just dropped it back. He's going to just try to find a receiver in the end zone. He's running around back there. It looks like he got a million-dollar bill in his pocket. Everyone's chasing him. Breaks the tackle right there. Finally, he finds Brennan wide open in the end zone, I think. By him scrambling, left him get open. There he was for a touchdown. I don't believe they're going to let the players leave the field yet, but we'll have to hold on here and wait. Now, all that remains to be done for BC is to go for a two-point conversion to make it somewhat respectable because it is a 33-24 ball game. Pat Dye has not left the ballpark, as you can see. And they may ask the fans to get off the field, and I believe they will, and give Boston College an opportunity to try to put two more points on the board. There were those that questioned as to whether or not this would be a high or a low-scoring ball game. We figured that with Auburn and their ground control, that they would not put a whole lot of points on the board. If they were to win, they would be in the 20s. They have held the opposition to an average of 15 points per ball game throughout the year. They have given up 24 here tonight. They're going to clear the field and let Boston College go for the two-point conversion with no time remaining on the clock. Boston College was down there on several occasions tonight, but big turnovers, uh, interception, uh, catch a, a pass, and fumble the football. It's on 
several uh, turnovers, five turnovers tonight. You can't have that many turnovers against a good football team like Auburn. The reason why Auburn is ranked in the top 20 in both polls and a good reason why Boston College is ranked 20th by UPI. Both these teams came to play and they have come to play with vigor. Auburn took control of the game from there and led 23 to 10 at halftime, 33 to 10 at the end of three quarters. Boston College has put two touchdowns on the board in the fourth quarter. Cody had to think about running this ball, Sam, once he gets back to set up. There he goes. There he goes. And, and he's going to make it. Two points. And the spike for Flutie. But it is all in vain as Auburn has capped off a tremendous season. The Tigers come to Orlando and win the Tangerine Bowl, defeating Boston College 33-26. to We'll be back in just a moment. Wins the Tangerine Bowl 33 to 26. The final score uh, not indicative of the domination of Auburn. Paul McGuire, the key to the game. The key to the game was the offensive line of Auburn, number one, and the defensive line that did a great job when they had to against Flutie. Okay, good rushing game for Bo Jackson, 75 yards. For Lionel James, 103. Randy Campbell, our Vitalis MVP, 10 completions. Out of 16, 176 yards, Auburn wins it 33-26 for Paul McGuire. This is Sam Rosen. So long, everyone.